And oh, we got numbers. Look at that. Hey guys, welcome to Cleveland Moto episode. It's episode number four hundred and twenty-nine. Four twenty-nine. My God, <laughs> light them up, boys. Ah, oh, that was good. My Bach. Hmm. No, it's my Bach. It's my Bach. It's your Bach. It's Ellicottville my Bach, German style lager. It's delightful. Chris, you've got a very big pink drink. Thank Sorry, you for I waited, noticing. I waited until your mouth was full. <laughs> oh, chips. Shit, that's a bad guy, bad host. Well, Tommy Boy made some uh, fun drinks. That oh, was Becky. Man. Yeah, yeah. Becky? The, Becky cocktails. Uh, That's a Becky Rita. That is a Becky Rita right there. Well, that there is you all, go. There all you the go. good, all the good. And to his left, we have... Uh, Steve Sleepy. And to his left... Dan Kropke. And manning the bar today... Tom Pennington. Tom Pennington. Uh, Tom, you went and saw the Cleverleys. I did see the Cleverleys. The Cleverleys. And uh, what is up with the benefit squirrel hunt? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Help me out. Okay, all right, we... Uh, Kill a squirrel, save a whale. All right. All right. Got it. Mm-hmm. The benefit squirrel I hunt. believe the line is every 13 cents for yeah. every squirrel bounty right. is donated to Save the Whales Foundation. Oh, okay. There you go. So kill a squirrel, yeah. save kill a squirrel, whale. Kill a squirrel, save a whale. Very good. Uh, so they're a... Uh, Bluegrass band, Bluegrass band yep. that does mostly covers, yeah. which is which is really which is what you want. Because their entire thing, well, their entire yeah. thing was, you know, bluegrass is kind of stodgy and old and, you know, it's it's been done over... It, I've, I've told a friend of mine. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. We need some input here. <laughs> Sleepy's kind of like. What? Sleepy's like, I disagree. No, but all yeah. I'm going to say is, that, okay, play it. You know, it's it's kind of. <laughs> right. I, I was telling my friend, it's you know, it's not like they're ri- running new any new Irish dirges. Right. You know, it's kind of the same thing. And so what they do is they take modern contemporary yeah. music. This all goes back to Weird Al doing doing parodies or Richard Cheese or doing, Richard lounge Cheese doing lounge versions or whatever. Versions. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. We so all they like do that. bluegrass versions of everything. Everybody and they're likes really, a good cover. They're really. And they're really good. Because dude, dude originally was a stand-up comedian. Digger, yeah. Digger Cleverly was originally a stand-up comedian. So his timing He's is got freaking it. on. He's got it. <laughs> yeah, and I love that stuff because there's nothing better than you see something like a postmodern jukebox. Yeah. I would never know the words to all about that bass. Oh, exactly. But because postmodern jukebox does it, exactly. it's fine because I'm old. You know, that's and that's the whole thing. Or Leo Moridachi, Morichali, Leo from... Mor, uh, Morlocchio. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, does the yeah. death Leo. metal covers of oh, yeah. everything. Death metal covers. And, you know, yeah. you laugh, and yeah. the, one of the next places the clever leads are playing is... Ye old grand old Opry. Ye old grandy oldy Opry. <laughs> grandy oldy Opry. My God. And you're man. like, because 20 years ago, the Opry would not have, no, no. this is not an Opry thing. Yeah. And but now they're some, like, no, they've, we kind of need know some what? young blood. It's Ameripolitan now, so we're kind of acknowledging that American music of that era yeah. needs a voice. Yeah. Right? So that's And it's, badass, it's good yeah. music. I mean, oh, yeah, even is. Sleepy will admit Absolutely. it's good yeah, and you know who who doesn't love a mandolin, a banjo, and a stand up slap bass, and a sle- right. and a steel guitar? Yeah. I mean, is you got to get on this. And even better if you know the words, exactly. Which is better, and it has right? that it has that pop appeal to mm-hmm. to the ye old younger or ye old younger crowd. <laughs> ye old younger crowd. <laughs> I'm an old timey youngster. Old timey youngsters. Well, that's very cool. So, that was over at uh, I was at um, Hatfields. Hatfields. Very cool. They they've been getting some good. Good bands. Up. It's and they make they do make Becky as Becky says they make some of the best pizzas. This pizza is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. That pizza is not fucking around. That is <laughs> that is death by garlic on a pizza. So very good. This message brought to you by the Hatfield's Good Grub, uh, bringing all the best all the best brisket to uh, the Cam's Corners neighborhood <laughs> of Cleveland, Ohio. Well, uh, uh, weird stuff. I mean, obviously, Cleveland hasn't been as smoky since 1977. Mm. Uh, I is that when the river was on fire? No, no, no. But it's oh, it, it's when camels. To me. <laughs> I was going to say it's when Paul Malls, Marlboros, and Camels <laughs> were present at every single child's little league game. <laughs> they were giving them away free. They were giving them away free, <laughs> exactly. And it uh, looks like Timmy on uh, third base has got a Terryton, and <laughs> we, got, we got to fix that. <laughs> Can we get the camel girl out there? So. Uh, But it is a very funny thing to look out and see Cleveland in a haze because Cleveland's been so clean for a long, long time. At nine o'clock in the morning, oh, yeah. I, was, I was like, "Wow, well, I wonder when this fog's going to roll out." And I was like, "Wait, we don't have that here." I was going to say, "I woke, <laughs> I woke up, and I swore the, I swore the neighbor's house was on fire." I was back in New Orleans; there was a marsh fire, and I went outside and went. It had I the can't smell. see the neighbor's house. <laughs> it, it, it had the distinctive smell. Oh, yeah. of a bonfire that got wildly out of control and took out the garage. Yep. And it turns out that distinctive smell made it all the way down from Canada. Oh yeah, and uh, so and it that's made it all the way to North Carolina. Was yeah. the wild, was the yeah. wilder part. It's a uh, it. It was pretty rough the other day. I was 
normally I'm like, I'll smoke a pack if I have to over the weekend. And uh, the other day I was like, whoa, I'm feeling a little something. Because, you know, I rode the motorcycle oh, in yeah. and I was doing some, you know, fairly decent work. But there was a there was a thing about it being like the equi- equivalent of smoking seven packs. Or, yeah, it was or a, something, something all crazy. All I know is we did get a, we did get a 280 or something. Oh, we yeah. had like a 280 yeah. score, which is pretty solid. Well, Renee would not open the door. No <laughs> way. <laughs> so a buddy of mine's riding around on his monkey. He's a former firefighter. Mm hmm. I said, what are you doing out on a day like that? He says, yeah, it's a fresh, breath of fresh air. Breath of fresh air. You know, <laughs> these firefighters, they, they don't even register. No. No. But, uh, yeah. But it is a thing, and it's, it's hitting everybody, right? So you know it's was, just a strange thing. You know, it was interesting. Did you, ever, did you guys see the video of uh, the satellite image of Canada? Mm-hmm. And all those fires kind of started together. It's weird. Like, all over Saskatchewan, I was like, <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? If you don't get enough rain. Yeah. And you got a lot of trees, and they haven't burned in a really long time. It's just waiting. No, I know, but it was just yeah. real, like, yeah. in you, different spots. Yeah. If, you, it all if you don't sweep the forests. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Well, it'll take care of itself. It'll take care of itself. With fire, yeah. right. It will take care of itself, I promise you. And squirrels. You're not going to like it. Yeah, it's, it's pyromaniac squirrels. <laughs> that's the problem. All these fucking Canadian squirrels are Canadian. just taking over. What's, yeah, I'm they're thinking, being super polite to all hey, our squirrels. I have not seen black squirrels yeah. until I moved to Cleveland. It feels like, yeah, those are out of Canada. So yeah, Canadian yeah, squirrels are a thing. Well, the real problem is the damn Canada goose. Right. Because what I know is that if you rub two Canada goose together, they're going to make a fire. Because <laughs> they're just, and they're naturally, <laughs> they're naturally covered in that downy substance. <laughs> yeah. And if you rub a couple of them together, you could have a fire. And when I was a kid, that was a protected species, right? You weren't allowed to fuck with those things. Well, yeah, that's where the Canadians had which all their is, anger. Which is a little ridiculous. I do not like Cobra chicken. Yeah, Cobra chicken is, <laughs> is, that should be number one on the menu because there's a lot of them. Oh, yeah. In my neighborhood, there's a lot. Our old shop and mentor, oh. when you'd, Push the bikes in at the end of the day. You'd slip and slide on the Cobra chicken poo. Yeah. And there was, and they would just, Emmy was funny because she was like, I think if I roll the roll up door open, they'll come in here. I was like, yes and no. Right. <laughs> of course they'll come in here because they're, they're dumb. And right? they're dicks too. And they're assholes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So one, don't want them coming in. Mm. And two, why are you so like, I want to pet one. No, you don't want to pet one. It, you know, people are like, I'm going to pet a kangaroo. No, a kangaroo's going to kick your fucking yeah. ass, right? Well, thing, or Canadian. an American bison. Or an American. Oh, oh yeah, geez, right. all yeah, those yeah, videos. Yeah, that's it. But no, a goose will fuck you up. Their uh, beaks are actually. Oh, stop. Dude, have you ever been attacked by a Canadian goose? I have goose? been yeah. attacked by ca- it's Canada scary, goose. It's scary, dude. No. They well, will give you welts yeah. that resemble Ow. a paintball gun at close range. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so you're, it turns you're out, just too, you're too yeah. slow. I, you yes, get, you're you right. You gotta get I a hold of him by slow. the neck early <laughs> on. <laughs> if you get a hold of him by the neck, I'm pretty sure all you're gonna deal with are, I've, I've heard they have webbed feet with talons. That's a hell of a combination. Where the hell did you hear that? Because I got... So, you, Centrifugal yeah. force is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, Dan saying, straight thing is, grab Cobra Chicken by the neck, and then instantly yeah. whirling Just dervish. Snap it, yeah. This is instant Dan, whirling dervish. You look right. over at Dan, oh, he's I'm squeezing sorry, and I'm, playing like a fucking bag. He's got the neck over, blowing out of it. It's the <laughs> pillow factory for you, Bruce. <laughs> Spent a lot of my youth ducking goose hunting, and sometimes you just wound one and you have to dispatch it. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, I just, yeah, we're my neighborhood at the moment is overrun with them because all the little fuzzy ones are all adults now. Mm-hmm. So, But you have eagles over there. We do. Which is very, very cool. The eagles have been taking all of our brown furry items out of the backyard so the brown furry items uh, you know woodchucks that little stuff the bunnies woodchucks oh man oh, those 65 pound woodchucks no there's the little ones Pete the one that we've had in the backyard for Pete lost his buddy Pete well it was Pete and repeat <laughs> what the hell happened to Pete you know, I don't know we don't know what would be we're not sure whether we lost Pete or repeat but we lost the smaller of the two to an eagle it was an eagle fucking took off with the with that with the groundhog groundhog day so he got that one. So then the uh, couple of bunnies, we, we got to see, I got, bunny guts was in my backyard, so we know the eagle got a bunny out of the backyard. 
Um, I don't care what they do as long as they take the things that are normally eating my tomatoes and everything else. And, and eagles can take anything else because eagles aren't eating out of my garden. No. But the eagles are eating the things that are eating out of my garden, so I'm cool. When the day that I see a bald eagle take a, even a medium-sized deer out of my backyard, <laughs> I'm going to be the happiest guy in the world. You're, you're going to give him a... A free uh, token. Oh, buddy, the the deer in my neighborhood are just straight fuck you ghetto punk now. Like they're just like, yeah, whatever, we're deer. Yeah, I'm gonna eat everything you got over here. I'm, Dude, I'm well, a deer. On right? the Fourth of yeah. July, you're gonna wake up. There's gonna be eagle screeches and fucking <laughs> Uncle Sam coming out of there. I like it. We used BB to have gun. we used to have one eagle cam, and now we have like seven eagle cams yeah, at yeah. Avon Lake. Because we are getting a whole hell of a lot of bald eagles, which is fine. Yeah. Because when I'm sitting down at the lake on the pier having a cocktail, and I see Ann bald eagle Freedom fly over. Freedom flies over. Yes, it's really you, cool. You know it would be awesome, though. This <laughs> yeah. would just, a certain crowd might not like this, but what if all the bald eagles were just gay? Like, just well, straight up, like, <sighs> screech. <laughs> Fierce. Uh, but it is fun when you watch them, because we have a... We have a fish in Lake Erie called a sheep's head. Yeah. And it's a big, big, giant, stupid fish, and it's not good for a lot. Carp. It's a big-ass carp, right? It's a big, white, bleached-out carp. The fat head. Oh, God. And, uh, but... Good eating? But they go yeah. pretty heavy. They go pretty big. Yeah. And so we used to have a lot of a problem with you'd go canoeing or kayaking, and they'd just be floating on the surface every so often. There's too many of them around dead floating, and nobody would eat them. And it was too big of a job for your average seagull. Well, not these goddamn spruce goose fucking bald eagles we got. These things come in and they'll grab the entire giant 12 pound fish and off they fuck with it. Until they and drop it on your car. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's pretty cool, well, man. They're, they're, doing, they're doing good God's work out there, I tell you, those bald eagles. I'm all for it. Circle of life. It is very much. It's the evening to balance out a little bit. That's, that was probably Johnny Max there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did get a oh, poo. Got, what's I, that? I've yeah. got Johnny Max. Yeah, no, well, that's, a, that's extra then. Okay. I got a poo on my van the other day that can only be bald eagle poo because it's about nine and a half feet long. And there's, unless they've taught the hippo to fly, it can only be bald eagle poo because it goes on the entire roof of my van and down the sides of the windows. Wow. Don't you have egrets out there too? I don't know, but yeah, we so. yeah we would be a really big one for that. Might they've be more, said might be more that we have egrets, but. I haven't seen one personally yet, but we've that, been told they're that out. That might be more heron sized at that point. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I, I pulled up on the screen if you guys are interested. Um, the little motorcycle Wait, that you motorcycles? see there. What motorcycles. Are we talking about? Motorcycles. I thought motorcycles. we were talking about. Uh, I thought this was uh, right. Canada Goose. Where's, uh, where's the eagle seat chat? on this machine? Well, you see that little ha the thing under his hand on on the on the bump of the motor the uh, tail? No, that's to stop you from getting eaten by the back. You all yeah. know that we were talking about the Italjet. Dragster, yeah, 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 yeah. right. Uh, this Velocifero, which is another Italjet thing, right. This is a two hundred horsepower, horsepers, yeah, electric scooter, and it's a combined project between just everybody. Just let's just say everybody. That's all it is. Um, they're going for a land speed record. And I'm going to tell you, whether or not they say it's in the scooter class or the electric vehicle class, or I don't care. I really don't care. The story here, the story that I love is this guy. The son of a former professional Ducati and Benelli racer will attempt to emulate his father's 1969 speed record attempts at Monza by riding the prototype Velocifero 200 horsepower electric scooter in a quest for his own speed records. Alexander Tartarini, which if you're a motorcycle riding, motorcycle racing historian, you'll know that name, will ride his motorcycle, his electric prototype at Monza, June 30th, 54 years after his dad, Leopoldo Tartarini, tried to break some world speed records of his own on a three-wheeled cycle car powered by a CZ250 engine. Um, Alexander, is uh, he was the creator of the Velocifero brand, which has, to various degrees, mirrored his father's own journey through the motorcycle industry. Now, this is the reason that the new Italjet um, looks like liquid sex. Uh, there's just there's no better way to say it. They've done all the right things, as far as I'm concerned. I, and, I object. Okay, go ahead. I object. It has the name Velocifero down the side. 
Well, the race one does. I understand. But the dragster doesn't. I understand. It should have been called the dragster then, not the Lodge Vero. You know why? Why? Because it does not look like E.T. fucking a best. That's true. The the Velo is... (laughs) With a football helmet. (laughs) The Velo's pretty fucking awful. Uh, The Velo was pretty goddamn ugly. But the weird thing about this is, this guy has not one, but two fully paralyzed legs. Oh. uh, What did you do today? Because he's going to ride a 200 horsepower electric bike and set a land speed record with two fully paralyzed legs, which then goes back to your first question is where's the motherfucker going to put his feet? Ah. Well, apparently they're going to be Velcroed somewhere because he don't need them. That's I why mean, there's no seat because they can just bend his legs backwards. That's what I was yeah, wondering. Yeah. He's just fucking <laughs> fold him up, fold him up, fold him up like a cot. I think they're going to slide his legs into the area left and right of the place where his ass goes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, he's had a procedure where they went and they just went <laughs> <laughs> and just fucking they, they just right into the where, I feel like I could, where you'd have the, the, the glove box uh, they just shove his feet I, in there it's like a futon <laughs> I, mean, I, I, mean, I feel like I accomplished something just by getting that PX running so it's, honestly I'm this is one of those ones where I just go all right again he's got he's got He's par- paralyzed from the waist down. I'm him. What the like? Oh, Think I feel it. really bad about what I did today. The paralyzed guy from the is many, going out to set a land speed record and yeah, yeah, but he's about it. Two hundred horse purse. Now, you, number one, number one. Yeah. When did his legs get paralyzed? Not not yesterday. I mean, did he? I mean, it says well, he was involved in a serious crash okay. during the Moto Giro. So that's okay. a thousand so, yeah. mile race. Oh yeah, no, he, right. you know, so he's thing. in the Moto Giro, and he has not stopped riding. This is perfect. And he was riding for Ducati when yeah. it did, which which literally he would walk and ride again, but he's been unable to pass the strict racing health checks, right? Which ends his racing career, right? All right. <gasps> so fuck it, I'm going to set land speed records. Yeah. Well, well, you fucking Hell go, yeah. you fucking hero. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well think about done. It, your fear would be a lot less because if you crash, you can't feel well, your so legs, gonna so break. it's not really going to hurt anything. <laughs> so how about this? So he right. decided to okay. ride around. Oh, no, I can't feel my legs. He decided to ride around. I know, I know. It's a horrible joke. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Any, look, look, look. What look, is look, the matter with you? You have to pay over $10 for the Patreon just to get that punchline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, this is a fun paragraph. So he decided to, after the crash, after the crash, he decided to ride around. This is his dad. Okay. After the crash, he decided to ride around the world on a Ducati as a promotional exercise, along with his friend Giorgio Monetti. That groundbreaking trip, in turn, led Leopoldo to become a manufacturer himself. He founded the firm Italamazza. I'm sorry, Italamazetta. Thank you. Italamazetta. It's Italian. In 1960, which eventually went on to become the unorthodox Italjet brand, the maker of the Dragster scooter. Just a little something for the folks at home. Italjet has made goofy shit as long as I've been alive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little seven. The Italjet Kit Kat folding bikes. Italjet has made wonky shit. Italjet has also made some screaming fucking two stroke dirt bikes. Italjet has made a ton of stupid, silly bikes. I knew about them because the Kmart in front of my in, out my neighborhood, I grew yep. up, Kmart, in front of the Kmart had a little thing you put a quarter in as a dirt bike, and it'd yep. go, rang, rang, rang. Yeah. but the bike they used wasn't a PW50. It yep. was an Italjet. It was Italjet, oh, yeah. Wow. No, I have one of those in my Kmart, too. And yeah. so as a kid, I was oh, like, yeah. what the hell is Italjet? And so you, you kind of learn, right? So this guy's dad invented that kooky fucking weird brand that is a Teljet. Uh, game on, man. But you know what? What's interesting about Europe is like a lot of, it, it, because of grants and things like that, mm-hmm. like you asked why we aren't doing stuff. I think a lot of Europeans just go, I would like to do this crazy thing. And then they go to the government and they go, okay, we'll give you a grant for that. Yes. And then they can do it. Right. Well, well I mean, you know, you got to quit your job. You have no health insurance. You're like, I would like to try something. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Sorry. Fuck. So what do you do in this year? It's, you know, you haven't started college yet. You're out of high yeah. school. You know, what, what are you doing? Gap year. Gap year. What's, you know. What the, I'm sorry, huh? 
What? How does that work? You get money to just go learn <laughs> shit? Gap year. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, that's the joke right. about, you know, we're always that's talking about That's better than gap year. You don't want to have a gap year. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. That's how, that's how kids are paying for college these days here yeah, in the States. Yeah. yeah. Um, only have fans. you seen my only gap fans? Gap <laughs> that's it. No, no, no. That's the old joke about, though, how the, how the Germans were always so into tuning Vespas when we were getting into it. We're like, yeah, we're going to buy them a Losi kit and stuff. Mm. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to go down to my basement and rank up the bridge port. I'm going to put a, you know, TZ175 yeah. freaking piston in this two, one to what, you know, 50 cc and crazy nut and the government paid him to do exactly. it exactly right our government sucks you want a machine Wait, you want to learn how to Eagle. machine you want to learn how to machine cylinders and pistons in your yeah. basement i think we can find you a milling machine yeah mm-hmm. what yeah, I know. It, 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 yeah. okay all right cool all and right. I, I talked about bringing a bridge port in one day though and phil yelled at me so mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that will slow down productivity bridge yep. port's the only machine that can build a bridge port well, now a robotic bridge port can do it without the operator. Right. Right. That's what AI does. That's what AI does. Oh, it's just like, it, it builds it in a freakishly surreal manner now. Yep. Ed Delzani has yep. three yeah. bridge ports. That's, that, that's, Here's the deal. When they make these yep. fucking AIs making food for you, <laughs> that's when you don't eat it. Because them fuckers are sneaking shit in there to off us. I'm just telling you right now. I'm Kill just all humans. letting you know. Kill yeah. all humans. Kill all humans. Kill all we, humans. We can either die slowly or quickly. Which way you want to go? It's, yep. Soylent green. Yeah. Bye yeah. bye, humans. Bye they invented now. AI. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. So, yeah, so that's, I, I found that intriguing that the guy's going to go after, you know, this, well, it's, a scooter with 200 herspers. I mean, I, I have some logistical questions about that where, you know, when it comes to a, a slow stop, how does he stop? Well, he's, I mean, he's, I mean, he's got to figure it out. I, 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 I get it. I'm guessing no, no, the, the, the man who's going to be on the bike has yeah. par- partial use of his legs. He's oh, recovered. He just can't pass yeah. physical for, right. Yeah. But he oh, can't get back okay. on the racetrack. Okay. Right? okay. That makes yeah, more sense. Okay. All right. I was like, this is, you know, a little yeah. weird for, <laughs> if they're going to tuck his legs in the glove box, it's going to be Well, a then weird. again, though, I mean, if you're doing two ways, you might not have to stop. <laughs> and so like, he's going to be a really long turn around. run around the other way. And then when he comes to the end, his team, he stops and the team holds him up. It's not. Oh, man. Uh, and the other option, if he good. crashes, it doesn't matter if he had legs or not. He's still going down, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <coughs> so why are you going to hell? Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, oh, many, any, many so reasons. I did want to read. I wanted to read one topical oh, uh, hate mail from our Patreon. Hey, remember, oh, if John's you guys going to be so sad. He's if, not here. For I know him. he's. Not, <laughs> if you guys participate, you Patreon thing. You can send us hate mail. I just want to make sure people know clevelandmoto at gmail.com, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty fucking easy to remember, right? Clevelandmoto at gmail.com is a way for people who don't send us money on Patreon, who just want to give us a fucking criticism or a big fuck you, whatever, clevelandmoto at gmail.com. It's fine. Super easy. If you're a Patreon member, yeah, we said it. I'm going to read you, right? That's it. Uh, I'm going to read your stuff. And so, again, love the name KLR Facehead. (laughs) <laughs> so KLR Facehead says, sup guys, the name's Sam, and I'm a 25-year-old Gen 3 KLR fetishist from Minnesota, hey. who has suffered through an every episode from Dustin's Garage to Chocolate <laughs> Thunder and White Lightning to the Ratskeller. <laughs> Hours of my life I will never get back. I got my AMA Vintage Days camping spot months ago, nice. and I'm planning on riding the KLR down from Minnesota. Right? Uh, That's great. On my first road trip. Nice. Hey, all right. I can't and wait to meet fuck. y'all and, and drink from the bear, the bourbon fairy fire hose. <laughs> here's, 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 <laughs> yes. Here's a quick tip from your your weird cousin Sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> when you get to fucking vintage days for your first time, you're going to get fucking shit hammered. Yes, you are. But don't do that on Saturday or Sunday before you have to ride right. 75,000 yes. miles home, big, man. That's a good safety tip, especially <laughs> and, on the KLR. And put yeah, your yeah. tent up first. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Tom, Tom with the clutch yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> Tom, that is I really I learned important. this lesson. I, had, I shared a picture earlier this year. It was an honest picture from Mid-Ohio last year. I woke up at, at like, I don't know, 5.30 or 6 on the one morning, and yeah. I was walking around going to find a place to piss, and this dude, there was a pile of sticks, a crumpled up tent kind of carcass, and he had managed to put his shoulders and head inside uh. what little leverage he made out of the tent poles. And was just out, but his body was just laying in the grass out. He just gave up. He was like, fuck it. My yep. head's noob. Always put the tent up first. Yeah. Uh, uh, excellent point. We, yes. we, we have all learned that the hard way. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, and that really is. 
to prevent you getting as far as I got my tent out of the bag mm-hmm. and yep. now I'm just going to roll up in it. Yep. Yeah. That, that's well, not only fucking. that, but after about like 12 beers, Tent instructions mean nothing. No, no, no. no. But yeah, you're while like, you're what? still sober, suddenly, yeah. while suddenly, the sun is still out. Suddenly you're Frank Gary putting shit together yeah. and it's still not going to walk. And it's not going to walk. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And it's, and when you do it in the daylight, you can look around you yeah. and you can acknowledge those things you're going to trip over later. Mm. What happened at our campsite, the FEMA camp, last year. <laughs> All the blue was, tarps? <laughs> yeah, but what, what happened last year was a lot of tents got assembled by the uh, the ladies who were arriving on motorcycles <laughs> later on. Yeah. And so we had kind of made a safe zone, like an Ewok village thing. We made a safe zone in the back where tents could be put up. Well, what happened is all the tents were being put up, but the guy lines were all interfering with each other. Ooh, yeah. So yeah. when you'd walk out of one tent, you had to play this game of like, you know, Mission Impossible right. with nylon rope lasers. Which doesn't so work this, at night when no, it's not so at all. This, yeah. this is bad. another handy tip yeah. that I learned hand me down. Yeah. So the the solar lights mm. you can get anywhere. You can get them yeah. anywhere yeah. now. They have some of have double. Dude, Mark's has them for a dollar ninety nine. Exactly. Yeah. You put those right at the guy yeah. line. Yep. That's a no great worries. idea. Yeah. Just don't even I fuck actually, around. I actually learned that at I'm gonna say it. I actually learned that from the hashes. So <laughs> at nine oh one this morning, hundred ninety five dollars bought you a camping spot with two weekend event passes. Something happened today, and I think it was June 30th was the cutoff date for the discounted price. And I think that the price for the two the camping spot, the tent spot, with two passes, bumped today to two fifty. Jeez. So it's a fifty dollar penalty just today, fifty five dollar penalty. And that matters because of our podcast listeners, Patreons, Motohop. So Motohop, who came by last year and yep. stickers and everything else, awesome fucking cool. Um, he's like, I, I love their thing. Hey, I was originally planning on camping at Vintage Days, but we recently sold our camper. Regardless, I would like to help expand the FEMA camp. <laughs> if you guys up to it, we booked one of the hotels. Smart. But I like the idea of a space for a 10 by 10 pop up to hang out in and unwind during the day. Obviously, I can do this on my own, but that leaves 900 square feet of unused camping area. True. Right. If you buy a camper spot, you get a thousand square feet. Uh, long story short, I'll bankroll a spot if you guys want to use it as an expansion for your space. So I just, you know, and he's like, so if you guys are down with that idea, let me know. It's easier for me to just send you money and you guys register an extra camping space or if I should just register for the extra camping space. So I was trying to help him out. And I said, you know, here's the link, 195 bucks, get you a camping spot. Turns out, no. Now it's So when he looked literally... So he said, not that it matters, but I haven't seen it for 195 265 on Mid-Ohio's site or 255 on AMA's site. $125 camping with no passes plus $65 per weekend pass. It's changed, right? Wow. So um, what I'm telling, you know, so MotoHop, we definitely want MotoHop to be part of our FEMA camp. Sure. So we got you, MotoHop. You're, you're good. You're welcome. You'll have a 10 by 10 spot. No problem. Uh, if you don't bring a 10 by 10, we will have plenty of them. I just bought two <laughs> 10 by 20s from Summit Racing. So, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, and you I have, have one. one. I mean, so we have, so, we have mean, right there, we have, we what, have 30 by 20. By 20. Yeah. 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 You've, uh, you've, yeah. seen, you've seen my, uh, yeah. my glamping setup. So. Right, right. Yeah. So we have no shortage of pop up tents. <laughs> no, I we got we to figure out how to get in on Monday. So that we can- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I alone have six. 10 by 10 easy ups. And I got a, the 10 and by you got a couple team right. with a 10 by yep. 10. Yeah. yeah I so, a and I donated one last week. You, you did. did. You did. did. Right. So we're, we're going to have shade. Yeah. Now the thing we got to not have is high winds. Right. right. Or yeah. we have to figure out a better. So I think this year what we need to do is we need to brace the wall that faces the road. Yeah. We got to tie those down more. Yes, we That's do. That's what but happened. Right. Those the, failed, and then it pulled a bunch sure. of shit. I need, Absolutely. I need to go get the um, yep. the weights that they sell for the Easy Ups. Yeah. I, I keep forgetting to go get We have them. those. They're called yeah, scooters no, and yeah, motorcycles. No, no, no. I mean, the yeah. actual ones you hang <laughs> no, up that, That's not what but, fails, dude. What yeah. fails is, like, you have the, the broad w- side of the tent. Oh, and they bend yeah. We yeah, did yeah, the, the, the move last week, last year was when we started, when the weather started getting rough. Uh, yeah. We immediately snagged all the covers. Off. So we popped the covers off of the edges, so they were just flapping. And then we didn't get any damage. Right. And then when it stopped you know, blowing, we just put the covers back on again. Yeah. So like that was the move. I, I was very impressed by our ability well, to get and, on that. And the other thing, I think what we're going to have to do, because we obviously are going to have another giant tent village, is that somebody's going to have to monitor it. If yes. there's any, like we're going to have to watch the weather in the morning. Right. And if it yeah. says possible storms yeah. at three, we need one person, somebody. Totally right. 
you know, we can rotate every I thought it was minutes funny how we were texting yeah. and we were texting. We're like, I can't get there. Who's there manning the camp? Yeah. And the good news is we had people there. Well, the you know, Harley Bob spends most of the weekend at, at these campsites. Right. So. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have him because, yeah. yeah, we last year we were doing the AMA thing. We looked out of the tent and it went from sunny to like black. It was pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. And then it was we, quick. We probably were at the farthest point from our campground when the rain. Oh, hit. hell yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I've never been so wet. It's <laughs> like, I, I don't even like it, my skin was That's wet. That's a cinch. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's a $10 punchline buried right there. Right. There is a $10, right. <laughs> yeah. There's a $10. Poem. Um, so one of our messages, uh, this goes out to, we were trying to get this thing together where we could do a podcast with, Steve Hoffert tonight because he's on the mend, right? Yeah. But he's got visitors tonight. So that's great. I'm glad he's having visitors. That's cool. Uh, so Michael Woods wrote and he goes, just listen to that podcast. Sorry to hear about grumpy sewer guy. Hope he's on the mend. I had my bug smash in 2009 and it took me about a year to get back on the bike, but no family. So I only had myself to consider. Is there anything worth sending him while he recovers? Also, miss him and his no bullshit opinions. So I hope you guys can do a hospital cast. Well, he's out of the hospital. He's in his house. Yeah. That's great. Um, as far as donations and everything else, um, they did. If anybody feels super compelled to make a donation, what I'm going to tell you is there was a, uh, what's that? Why don't we do a GoFundMe? Well, I'm thinking better that there were the two rescue units that yeah, saved John his ass. Yeah, knew the name. Yep. knows the name. We're going to put it in the show notes. If you really care and you want to take email, a look, he can email we'll it put back. it in the show notes. Oh, and right. so we'll link to those volunteer fire departments. Yeah, volunteer fire departments always need help. They need money, right? Okay, yeah. I've never Steve's ran right. into... Even though he's messed up, like he 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 has a good job. You know what I mean? Like, he has, what do you yeah. say, 738 sick days? Yeah. Yeah. He's All got right. something like 21,000... Uh, sick hours right, compiled. Right, right. so that's fine. 2,000, sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's fine, right? So he ain't going to lose his job. That's yeah. that's absolutely fine. No problem with that. But I think uh, he's probably mad he's using them because he took pride in collecting them. He wanted, uh, the, he he wanted to retire with like the but most I, sick I do, I do think that he needs uh, Cashola to help him uh, dig out from the uh, extensive sure. hospital stage. There you go. So, yep. well, uh, well, I may we'll, have to figure out something. We'll figure there. something yeah. out. We'll, we'll talk to him. Let's we'll get there. Feels, yep. you know? That is... Uh, Somebody did say uh, turning wrenches on old cars said, do you guys take two gallons of 10 year old am soil as payment instead of cash? <laughs> I will throw in some free stickers. No, fuck you, man. Uh, just bring that by. Drop it off. the Drop it off the FEMA tent. Nobody wants it. <laughs> Stupid. Am well, I mean, but you know what? He's an Amsoil guy, which means if he stops by, he's not going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and he's basically going to be telling us how we're all using the wrong oil in our bikes. Right. And look, I heard I look, heard what happened. Look, it's called Rotella. I, I, Find a better oil. Pff, I right. had an Amsoil guy tell me <laughs> he would trade me, even Steven, for my Rotella. I'll take that Rotella off your hands and leave you some real oil just to get you started. This is not heroin, You know bud. what? You know what? This is not you're, heroin. You're Gen 3 KLR guy? Yeah. yeah. He's already had that conversation, so you know what? No, no, yeah. no. Rotella it is. Rotella it is. Yeah. I'm, or just any oil. <laughs> Rotella's always. Man, you I'm, cannot, you can't argue on a KLR forum about not Rotella. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Rotella, man. Just fucking. Just Rotella. Drink the, just fucking Rotella. Drink the Kool-Aid. Just Rotella. That's it. Okay. Um, on to some real goddamn news. This is for Dan Kromke. Uh Triumph. Triumph does the 400. And it's fucking beautiful. It is. They killed it, man. <laughs> and you know what is crazy? It's, it's like, beautiful. They you show know, the pictures, and it looks like a quality gorgeous. fucking bike, man. Ah, oh, it makes me so angry that this bike is so nice. You know what? You know what makes me really, really Happy. wonder wonder about the universe? Yeah. Bajaj makes so many vehicles yes. for so many companies, they do. Yeah. and just decided, you know what? They're we'd the new rather, We'd rather just make bikes for everybody else and I, just make the money. Yes, I. Good, because you don't have to market. Yeah. You don't have to answer warranty yeah. claims. Yeah. You don't have to buy people shit. You don't have to design. <laughs> right? You don't have to... Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you want us to build it? We'll build it. We've, we've got a huge well, that's infrastructure a good, in India. Both of the the Scrambler and this one look yeah. oh, so it's good. It's a good-looking bike. It looks a lot like my Z900, to be honest with you. I have a problem, too. guys. They look almost identical. Yeah, we understand yeah. that, Phil, but we've accepted that. Right. <laughs> Question. This... One cylinder motorcycle has its one exhaust coming out of the right cil no, no, sorry the right side of the cylinder. Yeah, it looks like a twin. Without that, it looks like a twin. Uh huh. It looks like a twin from one side. Right. Thank right. you. 
looks like a twin from right. one side. But that exhaust valve, exa- exhaust header, is coming out at an angle that I could only describe as being, where the fuck's your exhaust valve at? Right? Yeah, right. Because if this is a four valve overhead single, which I'm assuming that it is, first of all, well, hold on. How is it any different than the 300 that you had last week with the right angle adapter? I, that, that, that's fine because you know, the right angle adapter is coming out of the middle of the cylinder. You know, right, I'm going right. to say this. It probably has an internal passage. Uh, well, you think? Now, now, I'm going through this because I just want to bring this to the attention of the kids at home. Right. Okay, because it's worth mentioning. You will not see a picture of the left side of this motorcycle. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> there is no left side. I was going to say, they only built the right side to this motorcycle. Is it hideous? Like, why aren't they showing us the other side? It's like, it's like with a two-face, where it's got the entire left, the entire left side of the okay. bike. It's just horrible. I, I mean, I don't want to be that big of a fucking, you know, a buzzkill or, what, or whatnot, but I've been through this website, and... No matter how many pictures I've seen of this motorcycle, I've only seen pictures of it from, from the, the right, right wow. side. Oh, you're not kidding! Like all the like a, a Google image search. It's all wait 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 wait, wait, wait. launch alert! Right. Oh, there it is! There it is! What? Uh, all from the right. All new Speed 400 first looked on Power Drift has a, and it looks like a it looks like a Triumph saying it looks like a Triumph twin with no exhaust coming out the side of it. I'm, but like. It's I mean, really funny how far I had to look to actually find one picture, picture of the left of the other side, side of, the of this motorcycle. You know what surprises me even more? That instead of having one big giant can like that, they right. have two fake mufflers that, on the side. I've, <laughs> I completely thought for sure that the reason this looked the way that it looked on the right side was that because on the left side, right, on the left side, there's going to be another fake exhaust over there or something, right? But... It's really hard to find a picture of the left-hand side of this motorcycle. And I'm not sure if it's because every photographer said, "Mm -mm, nope, don't get her from the bad side, just get her from the good side. Or whether it's just Triumph is saying, you know, we're approving all images that go out. It's really, really hard. Oh, that's kind of weird to find a picture of the left side of this motorcycle. Yeah, Dan showed the scrambler, and yep. they, it's it kind of is fucked up because they have a number plate on that side instead of a fucking instead of a, a side cover. I'm gonna pull that up. Yep, you're right. So like, but why wouldn't they put a number plate? Now you have a half a number plate and a half a exhaust. I think that's yep. just a painted oval on the side cover. Is it? Okay. Yeah, the like Bajaj. I- so the Bajaj Triumph 400 Scrambler, right? Giving the devil its due. Yeah, it's really, really hard to find a picture of that some bitch on the left hand side as well. Uh, I mean, I'm using Google Image Search over here, guys. I don't know where Dan found Moto, it. Motonewsworld.com. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, no, okay. I'm, I'm at. I'm at. Um, There's a pic of the left. Unlimited motorcycling is where I finally middle. got. Wait oh for yeah, it. yeah, you had it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's fair. It's okay. I'll go back. It's okay. I'll go back. It's fine. We'll give. We'll <laughs> give it a shot. Oh, and Daniel Patrick. <laughs> All right. right there. Your mouse. Right one over. Right. Yep. Right. There Boom. you go. There Is you that go. it? Yep. Yeah, that's not the best side. No. It's not terrible. You know what it kind of reminds me of is that Seinfeld episode where he's kissing that lady and he turns the light changes and he's like, whoa. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you know what it really reminds me of? That somebody at Triumph didn't think enough to have two, because you said it's four valve head. Yeah, it They'd is. have two pipes coming out the front into yeah. a TT pipe yeah. going out the back. That's Ooh. money, dude. That's money. You're I get right. it. That's a whole expensive. I get it. And Triumph God, right all, now is all about really cheap. But think, yeah, think about it. They're trying to bring in a 400cc bike at a reasonable price. Yes, they Anything that they yep. could save. And and a, and a, basically, that would be a fake pipe, so it's not really serving yeah. any purpose. No, no, no. If it's a four, I guess uh, Honda does a two uh, two pipe exhaust yeah. on, on a four valve. Sure, head. Uh, but I'm saying the cost oh, savings yeah. versus what you're going to exactly get out of it. Exactly right. right. Yeah. It doesn't going to justify. Yeah, that's that's a really weird thing that this motorcycle does not exist. It's still not making me write it off, though. It's not no. ugly enough to say I wouldn't. Because oh, think no, about no, it. Once, no. once you're on it, you're not going to see. <laughs> having, 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 uh, having ridden, having ridden uh, what is it, the Vit Pylon uh, yeah. built, built by Bajaj and yeah. a couple of other bikes built by Bajaj, I'm going to wait. <laughs> yeah, that's a really, it's, God, is it such a weird thing that that I mean, it looks quality, though. Like, I mean, like, I, I mean, obviously, I mean, from, the, from the pictures, yeah. secondhand through <laughs> 
Until the dealer down the street has one Phil and I can ride two up down to get to. Yeah, that's, they got a kick out of that. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like, but looking at it, like, when you looked at the Honda Navi and you saw the fucking, like, 12 millimeter forks, you right, were like, yeah. this is not an expensive This is not motorcycle. a good motorcycle, yeah. Yeah. right? We knew that. Like, right, and, on, like, and on 1999 MSRP, and then the, every Honda dealer in America went, we can't sell that next to the yeah. Metropolitan 50. <laughs> So I will say, I mean, I think that the 400, even from the left-hand side, looks pretty good, mm-hmm. right? Especially as the Scrambler. Do they give a horsepower and or speed rating on this? I, I thought every number I saw was extraordinarily like optimistic. 40, 39 or 40 horsepower? Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. But I mean, is it going to be is it gonna be an American bike? Meaning, can you ride it to Columbus? Oh, I'm sure of it. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure of it. All right. I'm certain of it. I'm absolutely. It's a dual overhead cam. You can at cam. least ride it to the cheese bar. It's a dual overhead <laughs> head cam, single cylinder, four hundred. Yeah. Right. If it has a six speed transmission in it, if it's making anywhere close to their bragged about four forty uh, thirty nine horsepower, if it's making anywhere near that, you'll be able to ride it and enjoy it and have a great time with it. It'll cool. be fine. It'll yeah. be great, and it looks great. It's a cool looking bike. You know what this thing does? Is it walks up and grabs the Scram four forty one, or the the Meteor. 350, and it makes those bikes look like shit. It makes those machines look yeah. really cheesy. Yeah, it makes Himalaya. them look really cheap. How do you like that Himalaya, boys? <laughs> well, you know, um, those bikes are so inexpensive. Uh, a Royal Enfield Meteor, you know, that's a very, very cheap bike. When you get into that idea behind those things, and you're talking about a motorcycle that's right around four grand, you know, yeah. Um, that's a cheap, cheap bike. That's that's less than a Vespa 150, right? It's a really cheap machine. But to me, when I sit on that bike and when I've ridden that bike, it feels like a really cheap machine. Um, I am not a person that thinks like, oh, you know, that, that Meteor's good value for money because to me, it's like, man, you could have spent not that much more money and got a lot more motorcycle, right? It feels... Well, it, it feels like it was built down to a price point. And when you look at the forks on the Meteor, they're not Meteor, right? And when you look at the rear shocks on the Meteor, they're not Meteor. It's, <laughs> it's a kind of a, it's kind of a really lean bike when it comes to spending money. And I know that it's a 350 and I appreciate the hell out of it being a 350, but it, it suffers from that whole thing like, Sometimes these 350 motorcycles aren't full-scale motorcycles. Right. And I feel that that's what this is, is it's playing down to a small bike standard. Well, I'd like to see how big it actually is, though. Because just like you said before, a lot of times they put these models on there, they might be 5'4", and so you're like, oh, it's a decent-sized bike. No, no, I mean, I rode the Meteor, and it's not a big bike. It's not It's not a bike that, to me, the oh, G400C is bigger. Right, no, I right. meant the, the Triumph. Oh, the Triumph, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know don't yet, know. right? I don't know. Because, don't like, know. think about it, like, my CB350, oh, right. I love yeah. that bike, right. but I look like a fucking monkey on it. Like, yes. I look like a giant yeah. thing. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. But then the genuine, not. Right, You know. Right. Yeah, and when you when you do see pictures of the Meteor out in the wild... They tend to be photos of really lean, very skinny people on them. Yeah, that, that dude's 5'3". That are kind of small. I think that's a chick, actually. Chick, okay, I she's 5'3". But three. anyway, I'm yeah. teasing. But, uh, but that's not a big person, right? And the bike is not a big bike. So it's too bad nope, good. You know, that we don't have the scale for that. You're right, for the Triumph 400. Cause, but aesthetically, though, I love the look of it. I love both I of them. I think they look really good. And hats off to Bajaj for building something that does look like a goddamn Triumph. Right. Speed. Yeah, six speed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I rode the G four hundred home last night, and I was caning it pretty hard, having a good time up on the freeway. It's a five speed, and I was like, "Yeah, it's a good goddamn motorcycle for you know four thousand dollars for a thirty nine ninety nine bike. It's an absolutely cromulent bike. It, it does what it does. It stops nice. It does everything just fine. But the best thing that it does is that it's not a carbureted 400. Right. It's not a 1974 motorcycle, but it looks like one. Well, you know what my plan is, right? You know, go ahead and tell so me. So I'm selling my SP250 and I'm going to sell another bike. I'm not talking about right yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm going to try to get one of those off you. As soon as I sell, I'm going to buy the G400C. Oh, okay. And yep. then I found a place in Europe that sells the mash All body shit it. for yeah. the cafe racer. Yep. So it comes in a, a metallic silver. Yeah. So I'm going to get it, scuff it, and then I'm going to have some fun with it. And, oh, really? But they sell the fairing, the tank, the seat with the back piece, both fucking uh, side pi- or side covers. Really? And everything. And it's about 690 bucks plus shipping. Okay. 
That's so, pretty rad. Yeah. So, I, and then that way I'll have a fuel injected, modern but still old looking cafe racer. That, I like it. Yeah. That's and, cool. And you get to sell another bike. And I get to sell another bike. Well, I the trick is I don't know how many of these. They're, well, I'm working on it. I'm they're trying gonna to run go. out. I know. I'm going fast. Yeah, I'm trying. I know. That's it. Somebody that's buy my bike. If you want an SP250, let me know. Um, in the world of music, <laughs> if you get a chance and you just want to listen to some silly music, um, just to entertain yourself, but you also want to listen to some silly music from people that may have been shot at recently, <laughs> you know, because, you know, you just want to help them out a little bit. Uh, the band is called Ot Vinta. Um, I do not speak Ukrainian. I do not know what that translates to. But what I can tell you is they're a load of fun, and they're Ukrainian rockabilly, punk, ska, whatever. Yeah, interesting. They're all those things, and they're a blast. And so they're a really fun playlist. If you want to put a thing on, it's called Ot, Ot Vinta. And I can tell you, yes, your 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 in store playlist will thank you because they're just a goddamn load of fun, and uh, we've been playing them on on and off in the shop all week because we're trying to do Ukrainian punk punk bands and stuff at the shop, mm-hmm. and so we've been laying pretty heavy into that because those guys got some shit going on, and uh, if we can give them a little emotional support or a little love, you know, put some energy out in the universe. Uh, you can be like my friend Monica. She hosted um, a Ukrainian dude that lost his home. Oh, really? And so he's been here for a year, but now he, she married him. Just wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah, eleven months later, her her. Oh, wait Monica, a second. Yeah. Wait a. So she's hosting a, a dude. Yeah. Hold what? On. Like Bumble wasn't working for her. What? I she guess couldn't not. swipe right. She had her in well, Portugal. Here's the thing. She was she was dating a dude at the time when he got here. Now they're all friends, and he's okay with it. He's like, yeah, he's he's super cool. Like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Can we back up one second to the chart? <laughs> This is, that's him and her. No, Look just a like couple com- interesting comparisons. Go right ahead. Seat height on the Tiger 660 is yeah. 30, um, 32 point I was going to say 32 inches. inches, yeah. On the 400, it's yeah. 32.8 inches. Whoa, that's a tall seat for a 400. The, right, and that's for the, the Scrambler, though, right? Uh, I'm not sure which one I looked at. Yeah, I think um, they're they the look same. pretty much the same. They do look yeah, the mean, same. It's just and a then the, pipe. the 400 weighs 395 pounds. Okay. The 660 weighs 455 yeah. pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a high seat height. And if Triumph's holding to their thing, when Triumph says the words, when Triumph says the words "scrambler," they make it big. Yeah, higher than giraffe pussy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I this my Steve McQueen scrambler. That that that, that 1200. Whew. Uh, yeah, when you get up on that bike, you're like, I'm, I'm, I need to, I need to just make sure I'm doing things right. Yeah. Cause it's a long way down. That's like the Africa twin. I feel like I'm yeah. like riding way up. There. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And when I'm, when I ride that bike aggressively and I made the mistake the other day, I was like, I'm riding aggressively. How aggressively are you riding? I'm riding so aggressively. I'm going to turn off the traction control and go into pro mode. Mm-hmm. So I went into pro mode cause I was going to be that's adventuring. And I was like, let's get some air into this front wheel and see how she wheelies. Answer, good. She wheelies real good. Mm -hmm. She wheels real, she wheelies really good and really (laughs) suddenly. And it goes from being, I'm not really wheeling to, oh my fucking God, she's going over backwards. Yeah. There is no safe tipping point like on certain motorcycles, right? Yeah. Certain motorcycles. The 900 are, are 900 like a foot are, and a half to yeah. like 13 o'clock and you're anywhere matter. in there and you're fine. You, you use it like a volume switch. <laughs> yeah. And it's instantly recoverable all the time all because the time. The, those motorcycles were wheelie machines. Yeah. This thing is like if that, again, you see the Lone Ranger, he's up on silver. He goes, hi, ho, silver away. And silver jumps up and does this horse wheelie. Right, and the rain, Lone Ranger is totally in charge. You're if like, you, this is great. My Triumph 1200 Scrambler is that, but a camel. <laughs> and if you've ever seen a camel do anything, it's barely in control. Mm. And if you can imagine the camel rearing up on its hind legs, you know you're properly fucked. Mm. There's no controlling that; it's just going to crash. And that's what the Scrambler is, the 1200 Scrambler. I've watched videos of people doing beautiful block-long wheelies and across the desert and on rough terrain, wheelie, wheelie, wheelie on this thing. And I can tell you, it goes from, this is fun, to, oh, mom, 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 no, 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 rear brake, right? It goes to that in about an eighth of a second. Yeah. So it does not have a broad, a broad spectrum tipping point. I then turn the traction control back on 
I went back to caning it the old fashioned way and just letting the traction control do its thing, protect me. Right. And then I was like, Oh, this is great again. So I put it back in sport mode, which is very easy to do. Right. But I went from pro mode, which is just don't trust yourself that much. So yeah. now, now that you have, well, you've had a lot of bikes with ECUs. But yeah. Two wheel, two wheel dyno tuners. Yeah. Um, so they did my ECU flash on the Z900. And one of the things that they do, so I have traction control on that. So they, they took the speed governor off, changed the fans 20 degrees lower to kick on. Okay. They yeah. made it less snatchy on the throttle. And then on the one setting for the, the, the um, three, which used to be like a rain mode. Yeah. Um, that was real hard on the AB or um, the traction control sure. and stuff. Right. They make it so that it's a wheelie control. Oh. So like. So rain it, mode it, is, mode three is now one foot wheelies. Two and a half foot. Like oh, it'll, it, even better. It lets you get to about here. <laughs> really. And then it kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then it brings you back down again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's pretty cool. So like, there's all these tuning shops that yeah. you send them to. They can do all. Like, yeah, like you, What do you want to do? Yeah. You want your blinkers to blow the horn? We That's can do fine. That. We yeah, can do that. Whatever you want. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just computer, man. Yep. It's just ones and zeros at that point. Yeah, the Triumph uh, Sport Mode, the wheelie control on that is about eight eight inches, but it comes on it comes on a little too harsh. Well, a little too harsh. Put your your wheels down pretty quick. Huh? As soon as you go like yeah, it's already already like eh, eh. <laughs> and it should make that sound. You should be like. Oh, and it goes, eh, eh, and the front end just drops. Settle down. Ah. Settle down. <laughs> settle down. <laughs> That's the noise it should make right so, there. Speaking of wheelies. <laughs> you, so should contact, you should contact the guys. Contact dashboard, the guys. The dashboard just says, settle, settle down. Settle down. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris. Yo. You catch, are you catching the smoke on this yet or not? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> How much mine smokier than yours? Because uh, you're a smokier guy. Smoky smoke. Hey, it is so, smoky outside. Speaking of wheelies, to make us all feel better yeah. about the SSRs, you yeah. know how we, we're, we've tried tried for years now in vain and maybe get a the long a swing arm yeah it, so i've you know what the, here's what i'll say having ridden the 110 with short swing arm right and had 27 undesirable wheelies from me just trying to be stupid right to me and you going head to head each other just trying to wheelie right on a hole shot contest right where we just wouldn't stop doing hole shots right. our chain should be 73 feet long right because <laughs> we never stopped doing oh. hole shots and we're not lightweight people no and you these know, are one twenty fives. Right. You know, you know. But you're just gonna have to take lessons from Oscar. Uh, uh, but what I, what I was gonna say is, so that little bike that I bought, it's two inches shorter, right? Yeah. And it's a semi auto. Yeah. So no clutch. Yeah. yeah. But I can bounce it in second gear, and it's like, Bruh! and it's uh, just oh, a yeah. Fuck. yeah, yeah. That oh. two inches. Yeah. Like I always say, two inches can accomplish <laughs> two, a lot. Two inches <laughs> makes all the difference. It just depends on where it is, yeah. I suppose, yeah. right? <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, the SSR. The, the SR125, people are like, I can't make mine wheelie, right? So I'll do a thing in the parking lot when there's kids well, yeah, trying to buy I, one I or something. Spent two hours at band camp right. trying to wheelie. And, and I, I got it up a little bit. I'll clutch but, it up in the parking yeah. lot and I'll get it across the... I'll clutch it up in the parking lot and get it across the parking lot to turn the kids or the dads into believers, I right? I you do that, yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, customers are... The customers are like, whoo, because I'm, you know... Because you don't want the kid to be like, well, dad, it doesn't wheelie. Right. Well, his fat ass just did a wheelie on it. <laughs> yeah. He's six foot no, one fuck and you. 210. I think. Get out there and Timmy, hurt yourself. Timmy, you got to turn have, the volume up a little yeah, bit, buddy. Can. Right? So we always do some wheelies in the parking lot on the bikes having, to, you know, having, to send the message. Having right? seen a 12 o'clock boy on a TNG Milano. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I think anything at this point can be wheelie. Hey, you just have to, you know. Buddy kick 125s are wheelie machines. Oh, yeah. And that. That SSR 125 made me work so hard for well, you. Really. Got to drop it way hotter than you think. Like yes, they you are. Do. If it had attack, it would show about 8,500 RPMs before that front wheel is coming and off. Chris's, the ground. And Chris's advisement center would then say, "Settle down." Settle down. <laughs> and it would say, "You have five of those left on this clutch." <laughs> Four of those left it, on this clutch. And it, and it, <laughs> service. And if you're out, yeah, <laughs> service. If you're out there, we can upgear your SSR oh 125. Oh my really uh, easy. Down gear it. Down gear. Uh, what? Yeah. Put Question. a high plate. Question. Yeah. Go ahead. World news. World news. Ukraine. Yes. I crane. We all crane. Prigozhin. And. He's hanging out now in Belarus. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, we are. So, Closer to Kiev. Well, here's here's the question. 
Here's the question. Uh oh. Lukashenko. Right. Does he have to watch his back? Because Prigozhin may just walk right in <laughs> and say, "Yeah, I think well, I want to take Lukashenko out." Well, you know I, what? And I'm going to well, take over Belarus. All right. Well, one and of the, then and then uh, and then. You know, uh, one of the big Putin things, says, well, fuck, OK, right. you know, we didn't need we didn't need Lukashenko anyhow. Right. Well, one <laughs> of the big things, though, was that he did not want to depose Putin. He even said that he said he was against the military right. leadership. He was not against Putin C- himself. Right. Correct. Yeah. Hey, and if you so, let the guy shenan, he's going to shenan again. Right. <laughs> but, but that's the thing is the only reason why is they were they were tired of being thrown so literally a, into a meat grinder. So so here here here's the question. Who's going to be dead sooner? <laughs> right. Lukashenko? Right. Or Prigozhin? I mean, this is the question. I think they better I, avoid all windows from I, second floor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's, <laughs> let's, avoid, let's avoid tea parties and high windows. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, one of them is going down. Well. Because they're, because they're not going to have two strong men right. in Belarus. But, but that's the thing. Is, is <laughs> He's building a new house. It's just... <laughs> There's no windows. Square, no windows. <laughs> floor. The whole thing is with no windows. No windows. Well, he, he's just he, he's just got slit windows up, you know, eight feet high. How wow, big? That's... How big am I around? Make windows smaller. Make windows smaller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do. Interesting if, landscaping. I, what are those mattresses? I, <laughs> I guess I feel like here's here's Ooh. I guess the thing. Pergosian has clearly said, I'm a boots on the ground kind of fella. Yeah. And he's big, he's, he loves boots on the ground kind of thing. That's his jam. He likes being a military leader. But Lukashenko, he's never, not so much. Well, yeah. And, <laughs> and, you know, at the end of the day, the, the two generals mm-hmm. yeah. that um, Pergosian was pissed off, they've never been on the front line. No. But you know what? Pergosian's never been on the front line either. He's never been fr- forward. I think this counts. I think he's got two years of experience. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, think, I think right now we can say he's got What's that? a year What's or two that? of. Well, he's, he's got a year or two of experience in asymmetrical warfare. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he yeah. likes to send those prisoners forward. Oh, and yeah. wouldn't you, you know, too? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Well, that's that's always been yeah. the Russian military strategy: is you throw bodies at the problem until the problem solves itself. Yeah, and absolutely. everybody finally went, "No, this isn't working." I, I so really, in, yeah. in Prigozhin, the guy that said. The war didn't need to happen. Yeah. Right. That it was contrived yep. by the military generals to yeah. keep things going. So there's a, there's a lot of bullshit going on there. So right. it's going to be oh, interesting yeah. to see who who survives, you know, in well, two yeah. three weeks. Yeah. I, I absolutely <laughs> agree. So everybody yeah. at home, place your bets. Right. Yeah, that's... That, <laughs> we, are now, right. we are now officially... Place Slava your bets. Ukraini. Placing, placing bets on the... Um, on Prigozhin's... Belarusian activities, right? Yeah. So what's, yeah. uh, what's this thing? Oh, it, you can it, buy all these little dopey things that plug into a 12 volt and yeah. will project items down on the ground. Oh, yeah. I thought that so was like, a Ukrainian so if you're, motorcycle. So if you're in front of the uh, Russian embassy in D.C. Right. That's <laughs> exactly it. Um, but yeah, they, they sell all these little dopey things that you can um, put it like, you know, when you open up your Ford Taurus, it can I, s- sign SHO on the ground. I, you know? Ironically, these are made by... A Chinese factory do you sold think, to pro- do you think <laughs> sold to I don't know sold that sold to project the Ukraine or Ukrainian support I don't know that brass all the same all the while the Chinese are supporting that brass Russia. housing looks mighty nautical Tom <laughs> that's true it might be a, it might be Bajaj yeah it might be Bajaj yeah it works even in the monsoons <laughs> the uh, but it is a silly thing I mean it's just. Uh, when you when you spend some time looking at this and you're like, oh man, like like Putin straight up bombed Prigozhin Wagner's troops. Yeah, like that happened. Yeah, I don't think Putin did it himself. He the, didn't call the it. The military did it. Yeah, the yeah, Russian yeah. military did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Would you? Would, would, and then and then when you then, blow up your own guys? Well, then <laughs> Prigozhin's guys shot yeah. two. Yeah, or three. What's the helicopters uh, out of the 18 air? Airmen. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, what's, yeah. What's the yeah. political official's name whose responsibility it is to make sure all the troops don't walk backwards? <laughs> the Russian. This no, it's a Russian position uh-huh. where the dude literally his job oh, literally oh, is. I have no, I have no goddamn idea. But all I know is, at no point ever, he ever, ever, and I've been deployed in some silly spots. I've been deployed some places, and at no point ever was my thought, I'm at risk of being blown up by my own military right. because they think our units getting a little out of hand. 
right? Ever. Did that ever? Now, I've been on a few ranges where I've been like, the people running this range don't know what they're fucking doing. Or I've been on a range in Grafenvir where some Bradleys got lit up because they were, they were maneuvering in a place that was an impact zone and they looked like targets because anything looks like a target through 10 power thermals. But it's, it's never been a concern of an army in the field that's wearing a uniform that has, you know, a certain colored patch on the shoulder that they're going to fall under fire that's directed at them by their own military. And that's yeah. fucking, that's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. yeah. I don't care how big Wagner is. Wagner. There's more. So how do they develop? Russians. Yeah. So it's, they're just like, like literally like a movie. It's they're private army. A, a, yeah. A yeah, mercenary it's thing. Or she, it's, it's not black it anymore. Is, it she, is, it's she now or whatever it was yeah. after but they committed all like the crimes Blackwater, in you're Ukraine. Right. Yeah, it's, it's more it's, like Blackwater. Private army. Retired military. What, do you need to do something that we can't get our DNA on? I got yeah. some guys for you. Yeah, it's called Blackwater. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But like, you know, like, like all these like Mission Impossible yeah. movies and stuff, they're basically the real thing. Like they're weirdo fucking. How about this? You're like, oh, what about Delta Force? What about the Rangers? What about Special Forces? What about their drunk uncles yeah. that have a gun in the closet and are willing to do some sketchy shit that violates every rule of warfare? Right. Wagner. Yeah, right. Right. W- w- yeah. Which, which they don't have to own up to. And, right. And, they go and there'll never be a and, tribunal. Right. Right. And there'll and, be a paycheck. You know, so. Right. Uh, they, yeah. they're, they're effective warriors, but yeah. there's really only about 25,000 of them. And it sounds like a lot. But in the grand scheme of things, yeah, well, might re- not be enough. And I read an article. They said that there's never been a paid mercenary group that actually went away afterwards. Usually, like, <laughs> when they do it, well, well, no, they come the back old, and they're like, hey, that's, man, that's the old more joke. Dude, that's where the A-team came from. Well, that's, right. that's the old joke. Come on, man. Is, that's is, the, is you pay mercenaries to start fighting, and you, then you pay them more money to stop, stop fighting. Yeah, that was the yeah, point. That's yeah, what yeah, they're saying. Yeah. That, well, uh, my friends... I'm very happy I'm not there. Yeah, right. <laughs> that is <laughs> nope. a very, very a big no thing kidding. for me. Uh, I, I feel, I feel terrible for anybody who's over there and has to participate in this horse shit. And I feel worse for people that are uh, are, are are just civilian people out trying to have yeah. a life. Yeah, it's like that's what always, all these people are like. I hate the Russians. You can't hate the Russian people. Like, well, some of them because a lot of them are just stuck. Like it'd be well, like if our okay, government wants to, to shut up is the problem. Right. If they don't shut up, then right. they're they're gonna get well. well <laughs> yeah, right. the thing is, is, what did somebody tell me the other day? I was like, you know what? There's a friend of mine who's over there right now, and he said some stuff that I was like, ooh, man, he said that. I don't think we can be friends anymore. Huh. And then my other friend who's here said, hold on. Keep in mind, if he would have said the thing that you would have approved of. He'd be in jail right now. Yeah, yes, yeah. And I went, well, yeah, you make an excellent point. Yeah. You make an excellent point. He said a thing that I totally disagree with. And I would be like, dude, I can't believe you fucking said that. But now I understand. If he would have said the thing that I know he said to me before in private and he said it on a public forum. Gulag. People did, have been put to jail for that or worse. You know, does, right? did, yeah. does Russia understand sick? <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did he put sick after? He did not. <laughs> yeah, him. right. He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't rat shit his colors or anything yeah. else. He, it is absolutely that situation where, and again, once you do the VPN and once you do Telegram and once you start looking at places that aren't YouTube and watching and learning news items that aren't YouTube, or Google, or Facebook, and then you start going, God, these people are really suffering. I mean, suffering. And if it's not the bombs, it's a flood. Like mm-hmm. like the dam well, that was protecting the, your 80 acres. Because they bombed the dam. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, so yeah. if you thought, I'm far enough back from the lines, it doesn't matter. No, the nuclear power plant may go up next. That's exactly what, yeah. and so you feel you feel bad for them. Yeah, You, you really it do. Just, your you know, it, doesn't, it. it doesn't matter. You got to stand outside and go, stop, just, just stop. You're embarrassing yourself. Just it stop. does turn into, it turns into those one of those things like, come it's on, guys, come on. That's why we don't do one, world wars anymore. Exactly. It's embarrassing. One of my, it's embarrassing. One of my, one of the favorite, um, yeah. I haven't sent him to you yet. He's really funny. It's on a guy on Instagram. Um, habitual line crosser. Habitual line crosser. Habitual line crosser. Okay. And he's military. He, his, his entire thing is, you know, drones and, and long distance, long distance fighting and blah, blah, blah. I'll send it to you later. It's really funny. And he does these little things where he pretends to be each country. Oh, okay. And right. literally it comes down to Russia, just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Right. You're embarrassing yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah. He's the guy that does like, and there's Florida in the corner again. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. it. Right. Just, just stop. Yep. That's, 
And it is one of those situations where you're like, God damn it, I thought we were done with this. Yep. I thought we got to the point like, where it was going to be look like... Look, man, you're just, this is just yeah. getting old. Like, like yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you, know, you pretty much proved all of your military... Like, we have wasted our military budget trying to catch up to you when it realized you're just... We're fighting 81 Chevettes. But I think what it is... I mean, <laughs> I, this is just an outside opinion, but I just think yeah. Putin's really old. He's got a limited amount of time, and he wanted to make a mark on well, fucking something. Well, he... You know? The, hmm. the thing I learned about playing, hmm. playing the game of drink and chess against Russians is that they're all, they always try to be about six dips ahead of you. And the problem was everybody was lying to him because they've been stealing money for 27 years. And so he thought he was five steps ahead of where he actually was, which is he already had the United States in collapse because of stuff that had happened. Don't worry about it. Um, and, you know, he figured this was going to be an easy walk. Yeah. There was nothing here. Like you said, it was going to be what, 30 days? This, was, this wasn't even, this was a police action. He was walking into Ukraine because he thought he was going to be able to. Come to find out, literally everybody had stealing all, it's been stealing all of the maintenance money for his military for the past You know what years. the opposite of Ukraine is, though? It's a red and white fucking TNT 135 that you had on the screen. <laughs> well, That's the exact oh, opposite of Ukraine. If it Ukraine. had blue on it, we would have known. Oh, I'm just saying, that, you know, yeah. people so, watch the news. They know what's and going it's, on. And it's kind of a shame because, you know, He's supposed to be this mastermind, but at the end of the day, you're just looking at him going, "No, that's just that's just kind of sad, bud. You need you need really need, you re- you really need some people that are that are less yes men." And, and next more, on no, the data download, it. we're going to the circle table. Phil, do we have Donna Brazil and uh, <laughs> <laughs> coming in? <laughs> well, nothing nothing circle gets us back table. from an unsolvable <laughs> world problem. Right. Hey. We're going to solve all the world's problems and shit talk motorcycles in the same half hour. If you but, just fucking hand them some Vespas, they'd all be happy. You know? That's right. <laughs> make, everybody, make everybody ride a goddamn Vespa. That's Bruno! Right. Bruno! Hey! <laughs> it's a Vespa! <laughs> it's a Vespa. It's just the greatest invention the world ever right. created. Uh, so, the reason, uh, the reason I'm trying so desperately to bring up a particular picture of a particular bike. Uh, are You're you okay right? over there, yeah. bud? Yeah. Smoke you sure? Glass. Okay. All right. Uh, I've been smokeless uh, all day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah so that's <laughs> why. Yeah. That'll uh. do it. It'll catch up to you. And that, you know, the, the wind's blowing out of the south now. So Canada blew away. The, uh, so here's what I wanted to bring up. Uh, I have a little insider information about some stuff. Stuff. And uh, so we're doing a thing at the shop. And uh, aside, we're doing a couple things at the shop. One is we're taking cash. Um, we're giving people sizable discount, discounts for cash, like fucking sizable, like legit, like put your credit card away. You're going to want to pay me cash. Bring in the greenbacks. Bring in the greenbacks, right? Bring in the goddamn greenbacks. This, this all falls back to Phil and the whole stripper thing. Like, it does. Right? We don't yeah, get into yeah, it. Yeah, as we said, I can't pay Payment that stripper months. with your fucking debit card, right? So the stripper won't take the debit card. So here's what I'm doing. Look at that guy right there. Oh, yeah. So um, as you might know, I'm a dealer for Benelli motorcycles. I sell motorcycles. And the Benelli TNT 135 is near and dear to our, all of our goddamn hearts, as it is. It's $3,199 if you take the white one or the red one or the black one. Red, white, or black. If you want the green one, it's an extra $70. Because the green one has the green frame and a lot more paint on it, yeah. right? So the green one is more expensive. It's the faster one, too. It is the faster <laughs> one. We did the check. Green makes it fast. We did check, and the green one is the faster one. But, my friends... It's got an aftermarket pipe on it, too. Do you know what's better I than... More. Do you know what's better than thirty one ninety nine? Anything under that? Tell us, Uncle Phil. How about twenty nine ninety nine? That's a saw. Uh, How about pig? 200 bucks off? And then instead of uh, instead of five hundred dollars freight, how about free? Really? That's seven hundred. Oh yeah, free freight. Wow. And then how about instead of uh, two twenty five destination charge, how about free? Wow. How about nine hundred and twenty five dollars off? Wow. Get out of here. Cash. Me and Chris are sitting there going, "Fuck you." <laughs> so well. So I have eight. Left. Oh, wow. I have four greens and four not greens. And are they going to turn into CF Motos next year? Or nope. Whatever? Or QJs? Nope. They're still going to be Benelli's? They're always going to be Benelli's. Oh, yeah. good. All right. Benelli's not going away. All right. They've had since 1911. Yeah. Well, I know. But, yeah. but QJ is selling their QJ SF 135, mm-hmm. which is different than the Benelli, but not a lot different because they come out of the same goddamn factory, mm-hmm. right? 
But Benelli is moving over to the Benelli house, which the Benelli house will contain Benelli and Kiwi. Mm. Same product, different distributor. Gotcha. Same factory, different distributor. Mm -hmm. Same everything, different distributor. Right. And actually, same distributor, just different name. Okay. How so, can we get one? Thirteen. D one ninety nine no twenty nine ninety nine wow. so two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars if you want a white one a red one or a black one while supplies last minus or for seventy dollars more you get a green one I'd go to the green one now for seventy dollars more you get a green one I have four green ones I have so if two whites one red so one if black, you're headed to Mid Ohio right? so if you're headed you to Mid Ohio deliver it to you and you want the world's cheapest way you can buy a Benelli that's no freight. No destination. That's no destination charge. <laughs> and this is still cheaper than any used Grom that has been ratted out on the marketplace you will ever find. You will pay your county tax if that's applicable or in the state you're from. Okay? <laughs> we have six states in Ohio that we collect tax for. I cannot give you tax for free. Quit so trying don't to, ask. Quit don't trying ask. to make me go to jail. I will not. I cannot give you tax for free. I'm not going to commit a felony for your dumb ass. Okay? But here's the thing that I can do. It's twenty nine ninety nine. But wait, there's more. Three thousand bucks. Twenty nine ninety nine. You are gonna pay the tax because you have to fucking pay your tax. But your tax is only on twenty nine ninety nine. And it's a good bike, man. And if oh, you don't is. think that a brand new Benelli TNT for twenty nine ninety nine is a good goddamn deal, ask anybody sitting at this table that paid more than that. Yeah, because well, we all did. Us. Yeah, three right. of us. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tom's waited for the twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, special. exactly. I'm good. I'm in now. Right. And the reason I'm doing this is I have eight of them, and I don't want to have eight of them anymore. And that this is a loophole because I'm not supposed to be allowed to discount current model bikes. But these are current model bikes. These are not two year old unsold demo models. These are all zero mile bikes. Tom can attest to the fact that they're still in the crate. Yeah. No, I have to move them all the freaking time. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the crate. These are bikes in the crate. Um, the question is... There's right. one red 22, I believe. Yep. Yep. And if but, you want a red one, you're going to get a 22. Yep. Yeah, but there's no difference. But no, there is no difference. There's no difference. And they're still amazing. If like, you I say, have these things. They're if amazing you say, likes. I'm sorry, Phil, I can only have a red one. Then you're going to get a 22. And the price is the same. Because yeah. it's still a sore dick deal. You can't do better than that. I tried. And we looked at the numbers any way we could swing it. This is fire sale. So the sword dick deal thing. Yeah. Like a 22 year old, that doesn't work though, because they'll still beat it. Like they'll, you know what I mean? Like Again. when you're 22, you got right. a lot of horn going. Yeah, on. yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Just I haven't seen a 22 year old in my Sesh. shop yet with four grand to spend, so we're good. Settle down. <laughs> we know, <laughs> right? We this know. Is, this I'm, is sober, I'm, Steve. See, I am. I am with Chris. Sober, Steve. I am with Chris. <laughs> Settle down. Yeah. Settle down. <laughs> so if you want a Benelli TNT 135, man, our merch if is, you our merch only is have $3,000 burning hole in your pocket, plus a little, a couple of shekels over for tax, if you have tax that you have to pay. Or if you're not going to run on the road, don't pay the tax. Just can I say this? Go dirt yeah, bike. Go ahead. I'm going to say that within yeah. seven days of yeah. this cast dropping, yeah. all those are gone. I think they might be, but, mm. but there's eight of them. So we have eight. The one thing I, was, I told Tom what we were going to do is we we're going to prep them all. We were going to take them to mid-Ohio, and we were going to put $3,000 cash, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, will you take, shut the fuck STFU. up. STFU. Right, shut the fuck up. Yes, we will oh, absolutely, we will absolutely take your BMW no, R60 slash 2 on nope, trade nope, nope, as long you as you got to do running. exactly what we talked about last year. Uh -oh. When they come up, $3,000. Would you take twenty six? Thirty one hundred. Thirty one hundred. Would you take twenty eight? Thirty two hundred. That's right. How about twenty nine? Thirty four hundred. But but you said it was five hundred. But it was three thousand. Thirty six hundred. I'm yeah. just not buying it. Thirty seven hundred. Oh, I'm gonna go away. Thirty eight hundred. Would you take? 28? Would you like to try for a thousand more? <laughs> I could do this all day. I know. <laughs> hey, friends, you see what this guy just did? Yeah. Don't be that asshole. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, you know, let him let him have died for your sins. Right. Now come up and give me three right. long green. Right. Like, give me thirty ten. Give me thirty hundred dollar bills. But yeah. at Mid Ohio, I yeah. think you're going to have to go as far as saying like, "This is not a used bike. I am not haggling. Right. Shut the fuck up. Right. Three thousand dollars cash." And then that rule applies that we just discussed. That's a lot of reading. It's a lot, <laughs> dude. They're going to look at the price. Don't they're give me the it. dude shit. These 3, people 000. are drunk. 
3K dollar sign, shut the fuck up. Yep. <laughs> Three, look, he's he's had at least two Becky margaritas and one time I, uh, bourbon, I, bacon, I promise whatever the hell you, I just made. I if we did that, and <laughs> when I discuss this, if we did that, and we tried to make it as simple as possible, because sometimes people in mid-Ohio feel that they are compelled to haggle, mm-hmm. whereas I'm compelled to walk up and go, 2300 Yeah, 2300 Here's the money. Mm-hmm. And I oh, fuck yeah. off. Yeah. You've watched me buy bikes at Mid Ohio drunk. If the bike's a good deal, the bike's a good deal. <laughs> right. I'm not going to sweat the guy. Right. We walk up, we turn the bike on, the bike runs. Right. I take it for a little ride around the thing. I go, 2400 Beautiful. Here's the cash. Sign the title. Good. Well, that was fucking painless. Yeah, because it was a really good fucking deal. Well, I always told- And then for the rest of the weekend, everybody goes, yep. You paid 2400 for a running Honda Dream with 800 miles on it. Yes, Man. I did. Yes, I did. And you'd pay 4000 for it. Yeah, well, holy shit. Yeah, did you beat the guy up? No, I didn't have to beat the guy up. His price was fair. Yeah. yeah. Just hit yeah. Him. I always tell people, if it's still on the trailer, yeah. you're going to get a better deal. If Damn I got to pull it off the trailer and, and sit Sunday there... And Sunday, it's the sit, opposite. If hey, I don't oh, have to no. put it in the trailer, it's a really good deal. But that's the thing. Is <laughs> I would rather I would rather give you the smoking deal yeah. off the trailer so oh, yeah. I have walking cash. Yeah, yeah, but you don't understand. You haven't been to Mid-Ohio yet, dude. But like, I have it, been to Barber hard, many yeah. years. No, I understand that, but it's a different beast, man. Like, you're going to see, like... The, the trailers get assaulted while they're in line buying tickets. Yeah, you're not... I have done this. Yeah. <laughs> I have yeah. done this. <laughs> <laughs> like the days of waiting for Sunday almost, to buy your bike ain't oh, happening. Oh, no, no, no. Tiger comes up with $500 in his hand. He's holding the handlebars of your bull taco. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's not going to let go. No, no, no. <laughs> he's like, I got it. Mine <laughs> no, first. I'm on that. Like, and that's the funny part. Like, literally, I, I told you, as I told you in the part, in the uh, driveway. How about? I have only bought one bike since I've been yeah, in Ohio, and yeah. it's a freaking right, mini bike. New sign. $3,000 <laughs> cash. Right. If you would like to negotiate, $35. Yeah, yeah that's true, too. <laughs> that's, that's true. Fair. But the idea is always... It's better to just, when we had all those, uh, the Trail 70s we brought out the one year, oh, yeah. and we just had a dozen Trail 70s, <laughs> and we had them all priced out between 1000 bucks and 2000 bucks, right? Yeah. And everything was on it. And the guy's looking at the $1,800 one, he's like, will you take 12 And I'm like, yeah, for that one over there, so that, that says 12 over there. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to move you over a little. Right, yeah. And the guy was like, okay, I'll take it, right? And we sold out of those things. I mean, they sold fast. So the idea would be a running bike you can ride around mid Ohio for three k. That's a legitimate fun motorcycle. Oh yeah, but I don't want to transport them down there. Yeah. So we'll sell them here. We'll sell yeah. them before mid Ohio. So, so tell the story yeah. about you know four, five, six years ago you're going to have a competition. Yeah. Where you have to buy a bike and then you resell it and then you buy another yeah. one and you yeah. resell it. So, mid Ohio so, challenge. Yeah. No. So, so tell that story. I, so we got to see the feasibility of this. Okay. Crap. So the way the mid Ohio challenge was started and we did this, we actually did this oh, 10 years ago, a long time ago. We did it. We pulled it off. And the goal was that everybody started with $500. It was a $500 thing. Buy so, it's a buy-in, basically. Show me your $500, <laughs> right? Do you want to be a member of this team or not? And then whatever happens, happens. However freaky-deaky you want to get it, that's fine. But you got to ride your bike to the Johnny Appleseed or Lamplighter or whatever the breakfast place was Sunday morning. So whatever you turned your 500 into, we expect you to ride that bike to breakfast on Sunday. Right. And that year, everybody, it was bonkers as fuck. I mean, (laughs) we were getting, like, there was some weird shit deals. I ended up with a TDM 850. Really? Oh, the red one. Uh, The red one. Yeah, I remember that bike. It took me four moves. Yeah. I had to buy this, sell that, buy this, sell that, buy this, sell that. But I did get all the way to a TDM 850 that ran. Yeah, with the gray seat. With the gray seat. And I rode it to breakfast. A running TDM 850 that I did pay about... 1800 bucks for. I was going to say, I sold a non runner for 12. Yeah, I bought it for 1800 running with a title and all the books and extra parts and the Dang. whole deal. It was clean too. It was a really nice yeah. bike and it ran great. So that was what I showed up with. But like, people had three bikes. Like, there were people that somehow managed to parlay that <laughs> into like a running CB550, a Project KZ1000, and a Project CB750. This is obviously 10 years ago. Oh. This was 10. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. That's what Chris is bringing up is yeah. that. 500 bucks back then went pretty far at mid Ohio. Yeah, now you're buying a fucking a wheel. Well, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, we don't you know. You know, it's, it's the economy's kind of weird. It is weird right and, now. And like I have looked at marketplace. Yeah. You can buy really nice like there was a Radiant. 
Yeah. I haven't seen a good Radian in decades. Welcome to Cleveland. Yeah. Right. We're tripping over the fucking For thing. like yeah. nothing. Yeah. There's a Radian for nothing on here. And I'm We're like, you know, I should buy that just because it's intact. And yeah, you, and you can buy a Radian here in Cleveland. It's got 3,100 miles on it. For 600 yeah. bucks. For yeah. 600 bucks. Because yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. you're only going to get, you know, like what? The gas tank holds like eight. <laughs> Point eight. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's not even, yeah, you, yeah. you make but it 30 I don't, miles. Like, I don't know last year. I honestly don't know if I bought a bike last year. I didn't. Did I? I don't know. I don't think I did last so year. If wants oh, to yeah, play, I did. The Van Van. I, I bought a you Van You get the Van Van last yeah. year? Because every, I didn't see anything last year that I was like, you know, that's that's cool and I can't live without it. But I, I arranged the Van Van ahead of time. Oh, you did? Like, I, I, I got with the guy, went back and forth, yeah. made some trade deals, some cash deal, whatever. So, like, okay. but yeah, walking around last year, everything was so fucking ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It, it was yeah. like, bring a trailer has ruined everyone. Well, they're yeah. like, dude, yeah. there was a guy, it was funny, me, Nick, and some other dude were on vintage motorcycle <laughs> something on Facebook. Yeah. And this poor dude, he posted a CB350 that was not as nice as mine for 7,900 bucks. See, and yes. somebody was like, uh, you know, of course he got attacked by everybody, well, yeah, right? Exactly. And right. he's like, well, show me one that looks good as this. Was it? So I put mine up and I was like, 704, 7499 <laughs> Like one dollar <laughs> under his, <laughs> and he was like, "Man, it was on Bring a Truth. One sold for eight thousand dollars." You be like, and "I'm just like that fucking website is responsible you know, for ruining you know, everyone, man." I I got a R R fifty slash two running for one of my customers in New Orleans that went on Bring a Trailer, yep. and I literally had to JB weld the carburetors back together. Not lying, and I told him, I said, "Look, by the by, the seat is Shang Zhang makes replica slash two carburetors. They sure do." And I said, "Look, yep. for six hundred dollars, buy the if you're going to keep this bike, buy these carburetors. Otherwise, well, it's going on bring, bring a trailer." I said, "Okay, cool." It went to the bid went. To, he shill bid himself yep. up to nine thousand dollars. Yep. And the thing about bring a trailer is, if you're in ten percent of your minimum reserve. They'll meet it, so you have to pay the seven thousand dollars to yourself. Exactly, that's where you got to be really fucking careful about so bringing a trailer. He ended up 10%. buying his own bike yep. back from himself, paying bring a trailer ten percent because I got the bike running so well. It was a one, it was a one kick slash two. Yeah, and he's riding this thing around. I said, look. The, the JB Weld is eventually going to mm. fail. Buy yourself some freaking carburetors. Like, oh, no, I love it. It's the greatest bike I've ever had. I'm like, buy the carburetors. <laughs> it's eventually going to start puking gas. <laughs> yeah. And that's the problem with the Bring a Trailer is literally everything on there is crap. Somebody like me has slapped together well, for somebody no, with but too much somehow, money. Somehow what they've done is they've, they've advertised to a lot of people with a lot of money. And all they see is like, oh, well, the bike's done. I'll buy it. And like, they're just inflated beyond. Well, the, the problem here is that you've hit, the, you've hit. Okay. For the, for years, the art world has been cobbled together by drug dealers. This is not a joke. It's drug just dealers, false arms currency. dealers. It's, it's false, false currency. currency. Because you can put $10,000 or a million dollars into something that literally has no value. It was a fungible token. And so, yeah, exactly. Right. It's a fungible token. This is literally, Always you know, been. the the monkey the monkey smoking a cigar that you cannot. And that's a non fungible token, yeah. right? Um, right. Yeah. And like suddenly, something that is worth absolutely fuck all nothing is worth a million dollars, and you just pass it along, and it's a million dollars. Whoever gets it next. Right. I mean, look at the price. And that for is what's happened with bring a trailer. That's all insane. right. So here's what I wanted to say, show you, because this <laughs> this is something that. If you haven't looked at this Oh, yet. my God. Look at the Sandcast. $41,000. Okay. Have you ever met a Sandcast guy? <laughs> Jesus Christ. There so was a to get an cast, inferior casting. There was oh a Sandcast frame at Mid-Ohio three years ago that was just a frame. Mm. Has title. Said it had title. It was sitting out in the field. $1,200. Yeah. For a Sandcast oh, frame. Yeah. Has title. And it had been in a fire. It, it was burned yeah. up. Everything had burned yeah. up off of it. Okay. So here's what I wanted to bring up, and this is why I wanted to say it for those of us who are going to Mid-Ohio, for those of us who believe or people that believe, and, and I, again, I will cite, Tom said, bring a trailer, ruined the world. Here's bring a trailer. We all know what CB750s are worth. We all been playing this game for a long $700. time. $700. We are not children. Okay. <laughs> so if we look at some recent auctions, I'm going to tell you that that whole my CB750 is worth $10,000 thing is not true anymore. There are many CB750s that sold for $5,600, $5,500, right? $6,300, 
$5,700. I got one today for $325. <laughs> not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> really? I have to go pick it up. It's in boxes, but it's, okay, all yeah, right. it's got a title. But this is my point is it is, it's over. It's just fucking over, man. It's just fucking yeah, I, over. Yeah, I think we have kind of jumped the shark on this one. It's over. There are no shortage of CB750s. Do the 350 zone. Look it up and see what they're good. It's insane what some of the guys are doing in 350s on bringing right. a trailer. But, but don't get your hopes up for that because there's a 1971 CB750 with a Valorex sidecar. <laughs> and that is 5100 bucks for a CB750 with a sidecar. And it's a Valorex sidecar. It's a good sidecar. The sidecar on its own is worth two grand. Oh, right. So that bike at 5100 that's a bit of a deal, right, for a CB750K, and it's a K1. So it's a nice early CB750 with a sidecar. It ain't, it's come down, guys. It's come down a lot. It's calmed down dramatically. Well, it ain't where it was before, but it's on its way. The, the drug dealers and money launderers have run out of money. I, I, <laughs> no, I think it's this. Hey, how many, how many stimulus checks did you get this year? Yeah, zero. I don't. Okay. I don't Scroll think down to the Super douche. Sport. What do they get for the Super Sport? I don't. I don't think it's. Well, I mean, how, what do they get for the Super Sport? Yeah, a thousand dollars less than they did for the K. Six, like six, always. Seven hundred. Which one? The yellow one? one. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you can't make me like these bikes. Yep. I like it. You can't make me like a Super Sport. Oh, the Super Sport. Yeah. I just don't like them. I. I just don't. To me, what's the four hundred? There's something. There's something that happened at the back of the CB750 Super Sport I cannot forgive you oh, for. See, I love it because it reminds me of my GS850s. <laughs> but they, so. the world made GS850s, and it's a better bike. I, I get it, but right? I still like this so, one, too. But I would buy all the GS850s, or I'd buy all the GS1000s, right. which is a much, much, much better bike. Right. And I would let, let you all buy all the CV, CB750Fs. <laughs> the CB400... F, totally different story. Right. You know what? Right. I'm, I like I'm, this. I'm bike, smarter man. than to buying any of all of these. I things. like this bike too, but I could buy a Suzuki GS1000 yeah. that does everything better yeah. than this bike. It goes well, better. It stops better. It now lasts the longer. 1000 ES is what you want, though. Those yeah. fuckers are eight thousand bucks now all day for anything that's remotely looking halfway decent. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But they're yeah. all settling down because so. all the people that showed up with a fat wallet. Don't have the fat wallet anymore, yeah, right? Because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if, don't know if, don't know if you're yeah. white boy wealthy and you looked at your Van <laughs> Vanguard account lately, but your Vanguard account ain't doing the one-handed push-ups it was doing 16 months ago, right? And your stimmy checks don't come in anymore. And that remember that remember that when you were locked at home for COVID and you're doing all that fucking. Well, now you got a baby. And COVID babies have hurt my business hard. Oh, I'm sure. COVID babies are alive and they're real and they're <laughs> making people sell their bikes. And they're eating up money. They are eating up money and they're not getting stimmy checks or nothing. So when you think about like how many of my customers had COVID babies and they come in my shop and they're like, hey man, you remember that bike I bought off you last year? Hold on, let me close my eyes and make this look authentic. <laughs> You've had some unforeseen financial stress and you need to sell it as fast as you can. Yeah. Okay, what do you want for it? More than I paid. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a shortage, you know. No, you got yours. Nope. There's not a shortage. You have one. Yeah. Shortage is over. You have one. So does everyone else. And guess what's happening? That big, when you see that tsunami happen, right? When the tsunami happens, the first thing that happens is the water goes away from the beach. Right. That's your warning. That was last year. The water went away from the beach. Right. Your feet got dry. But what happens this year is all the water comes back and brings its friends with it. <laughs> and that's when you lose your fucking house. Right. Yeah. And that's what's happening right now is, yeah, during COVID, as they say, it's a lot like a hurricane. There's a lot of sucking and blowing, but eventually you lose your house. Um <laughs> You, that, and then you end base, up in Houston. That yeah, that customer base <laughs> is so funny. I've had fifteen phone calls a week for the past three months. Will you buy my bike? That depends. What on the next thing you say? Well, I saw one on Bring a Trailer for no. no. I won't buy your bike. I saw one on Facebook Market. No, I won't no. buy your bike. I expect to sell, sell it, it for sell I, it there. Right. I, I tell you what you should do. You should go sell your bike. Yeah. And then use that money to buy things you need. Diapers. Right. Well, but you know, I, I, I owe more money than anybody's willing to pay me for it. 
Yes, that's because you're bad at math. This is called yeah. being underwater. Yeah, so, oh, that's another tip. Hey, you want a Cleveland Moto top tip? Don't live below sea level. <laughs> if you want to buy a motorcycle you don't have the cash for, right? So if you need to buy a motorcycle, but you don't have enough cash to buy it, don't buy the motorcycle. That's first tip. Yep. Second tip, if you must finance it, if you think, ah, it's okay, I like having payments, I want to make payments, I want to buy that motorcycle, do you know who you borrow money from? Lightstream? Your own fucking bank. Mm. Nash hey, hates me. So, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> and there might be a reason for that, Tom. Right. The reason I tell people to go to their own bank is if you have a bank, they know uh, your, your name, they, they know your address, um, they know how much money you've made, they know how much money you had for a balance. They're not basing everything on a transunion score or something else. They know you, they know who you are. It is called a first party loan. If you come into my shop and you borrow money from Octane Lending or Sheffield or Roadrunner or whoever, that's a third party loan. Okay? You're coming to my shop. I'm not getting my beak wet on this deal. If I was getting my beak wet, I'd be telling you something totally different, but I'm not getting my beak wet. I'm just watching my customers get fucked I over. I can't break that many legs every week. The customer that came into my shop yesterday that got a 19.99% interest rate. I don't even get credit cards woof. that high anymore. Oh my God. Right? So that $5,000 bike is going to cost him what? $7,800. Over, over the life of the loan. <laughs> Extra $2,800 over the life of the Oof. loan. More than 50% of the purchase price of the bike over the life of the loan. So it's kind of like a student loan. Yeah, except for you don't get forgiveness. Right. Okay. We're not getting that either. Right. Yeah. So how about this? Same customer went to his own fucking bank. He got 6.99. What the fuck was he doing filling out a third-party credit application at my shop where they offered him 19.99? When at his own bank, he got 6.99. And if you have a credit union, you're even, you can get a couple years worth of credit union? My credit union deal when I signed up to get, join the credit union was simply because Ohio Educators Credit Union, I'm not a teacher. Right. You know somebody that is, though. No. The rule for it was you had to have attended one class in the state of Ohio. Oh, really? DUI school counts. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so... <laughs> I didn't go to school for that. Thank goodness. I learned how to do that on my own. Yeah. Okay. But I became an Ohio Educator Credit Union member because they were doing a deal for 1.9. That's what I'm saying. For credit, new motorcycle loans. Credit unions are good. 1.9. 1. Yeah. This is eight years ago when everything was 7.99 or 9.99. They did a deal for 1.99. I walked in the door. I said, let me get some of this 199 action just because I can't, my money doesn't earn interest that way. So let's let you pay for this. And it's actually the best way I can pay this, this bike off. Right. And I need to have, I need to exercise some credit because I pay for everything with cash. And so my credit was like a 728 score, even though I didn't owe anybody on planet earth money. Yeah. It's, you know, it's insane. So that's the way that works. And if you don't understand that, you need to grow up and understand that and make a little, you exercise your credit a little bit and you'll be okay. I went in and they said, yeah, well, you have to be a member of the credit union. I said, well, what's that take? And they said 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, what, oh, it's going to cost me 50? And they said, no, you're going to put 50 bikes into your own account. Right. Yeah. Check. Start that up. So I did that. And then they did the loan. And I got my little loan paperwork. I left there in, within my hand. I had a check for the purchase price of the Moto Guzzi. It took 21 minutes. I'm no kidding. It, that's all it took. I had $50 in a credit union account. And then I got a thing like three weeks later that I was like, oh, you made 18 cents. And I was like, Wait a second. You didn't bill me a fee for not using my account? Yeah. You didn't bill me a, a dormancy fee? You literally just gave me 18 cents. So I took 10 grand and put it into my check into my credit union. And I have been making money on the money in my it credit loves, union. And you know it's crazy too. If you really do some research with yeah. credit unions, a lot of time they'll have things like if you put 500 bucks into the account yeah. and leave it there for a year, They'll give you $400 on top of that. It's, or they're, it's they're running one right now for uh, Navy Federal. Yeah. Then you don't need to have ever been in the Navy. Imagine that. 
You just have to blow a semen? I was going to say. <laughs> oh, no, sir. That's just ice cream. <laughs> but there is a semen requirement. Uh, but, but that's so that is a top tech tip is yeah. if you're going into a motorcycle dealership because you want to buy a new motorcycle and they're offering you Suzuki's rotational credit card or some other weirdo financing plan, run the fuck away. Go back to your bank where you have a checking account. Remember checks? Uh, we have a checking account or a savings account and ask them. Just say, here's the invoice from, you know, Suzuki dealer down the street. They said, I got to buy this mic bike for this much money. Your bank turns out your bank, unless your bank is like Venmo bank, which is a thing, right? Or discover card bank, which or is Wells a thing. Fargo. Or Wells Fargo. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, but it's true. They will loan you the money because they know you and it's a first party loan. Right. And guess what reports quicker to your credit union? I mean, sorry, to your credit score. Credit union. No. What? Your own bank. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you're trying to build credit, uh, Roadrunner, uh, all these third-party loans, they are not the way to go. Mm-hmm. They report 100% of late payments. They do not report good payments. Right. They only report bad but, activity. But if you can't get a loan yeah. and you have credit cards, it's yeah. a really good idea to take cash advances out on all the cards oh, to God. buy your motorcycle. Come on, Steve. <laughs> You're talking to 20-year-old Phil now. <laughs> That's it. What, 29% is not that much? Come it's, on. Come on. It's a cash advance. You know I'm going to hit the lottery next month. <laughs> right. I know I'll be able to pay this back. It's come the on. American way. Yeah. And then my other tech tip is do not take your motorcycle in for service if you cannot pay for the repair. Right. That's a new one. <laughs> what do you mean, storage fees? Yeah, yeah, that's that's something. You mean uh, you, you don't have unlimited space on your floor that you can just store anybody's motorcycle for years at a time? I have taken a certain unique demonic pleasure now <laughs> of when I tell people, hi, it's Phil from Cleveland Moto. Just call and let you know your bike is done. You're going to get three free days of storage from this moment right now today. After that, it's $30 a day. Right. It's been 10 days. That's $300 added to your bill. And your bike's a $500 bike. And your so. repair job was $129. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. We, we so. don't really take in junk. I no, know, we I don't. But I mean, no, there is we've no been junk. more careful. We've been more careful and, these days. And yeah. like, I try, as fa- I try as hard as I can to get it as fast as I it's, can. It's, I just think it's funny. The guy who calls me, is my bike done yet? Oh, yeah. Is my oh, bike done yet? Yes, it is. Bring me money. Is my bike done yet? Well, yeah. Is my bike done yet? Is my, yes, your bike is done. Can I come and get it? Absolutely. Absolutely. What do I owe you? $429. I'm going to have to see about getting that kind of money together. (laughs) Do you know anybody who writes micro loans? What the fuck? You brought your bike into my shop. You called me 18 times asking me if it was done yet. I told you, I gave you an estimate when you showed up. But how much do you think an hour of labor costs? You've had nine days of us waiting on your parts to figure out where to get $429. You called me acting like you'd be there in a hot New York second. The second I told you it was done. Now it's done and you don't have $429. Or I remember when I was, was there with you, a guy kept calling you and calling you and calling you to get it done. Yeah. And and uh, then never just came, like he just never came to pick the fucking bike up. It's like was, still there, sleepy. Oh Jesus! It's oh. still there, and everyone's like, "Well, that's great. You can do a mechanics lien. Yeah, let's move your ass to Ohio, and I'm gonna have you <laughs> tell you what. I will pay you a thousand dollars for every mechanics lien you successfully do, <laughs> hot shot. Yeah, come on in. Daddy said it. I said it. I will pay you a thousand dollars for every successful mechanics lien you do. Step up, Johnny. If you tell me it's so easy, well, in Kentucky, it's easy. That's all right. Guess what? We're not in Kentucky. Kentucky, In Tennessee, it's easy. Good for you. In New York, it's easy. They do them all the time. In Indiana, it's great. Kentucky's very, uh, unbelievably, Kentucky's very fair with all their DMV shit. If you do a trade in Kentucky and you trade equal value motorcycles, you owe no tax. Of course not. Hey, that's, I traded, that's fair. I traded my F, or not my F, I traded my my Super 10 Ray with the FJ09. Equal seventy five hundred yeah, bucks yeah, each, right? Yeah, right. He went home, got his title, sure. happy as a clam. I yeah. got hit with fucking tax on seventy five hundred dollars. At Ohio, yeah, yes, you did, of course. I didn't expect that. I was pissed. Well, man. I mean, Ohio. Yeah. I mean, if that bike is still there, yeah. Do you want to play a game? How long does it take to get towed from the side of the road? It, the answer for that is forever. So we trade. We played I mean, that we could game. Put it down by the Thai restaurant. Well, <laughs> a little, a little something for you. Um, the Cleveland police will write you a citation for littering before they will pick that bike up and tow it to the impound lot. 
So if anybody happened to see you drop that off on any of our conveniently placed thousands of cameras in the city of Cleveland, if you get busted for that illegal dumping, you're going to be paying about a $700 fine. Well, if I ride it down there with a helmet. That's exactly right. I, I would recommend ghost riding. And I'm parking it right, right. down there by the side of the street. You're fine. Yep. And you're it's fine. not my plate. And it's that's not my fine. bike. Or if it was running, we'd take it to Mid Ohio. But, uh, <laughs> that's how we get rid of it. That's true. That's how we that get rid of it. And when somebody comes in, like, so what's the deal with this bike? It's abandoned. Well, how come you didn't get a mid hand clean? Because it's Ohio. Because it's Ohio. Because it's Ohio. Right. How come this bike doesn't have a title? Ohio. Well, um, I'm selling you a bike. It has no title. Oh, uh, we're cutting the price in half. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. Well, why? Because it's Ohio. If you don't like that, talk to Joe Casola. Yeah. He'll charge you $400, and you will get a squeaky clean, bulletproof Tennessee friend, title. Friend of the shop, Saint yep. Cycle. Great guy, Saint Cycle. He will, he, he, Saint's title now. He's yep. changed. Saint's title. Saint's title. He will get you the squeakiest, cleanest title you've ever, never seen before. Yep. As long as the bike doesn't come up stolen. It becomes. Uh, among a, other things. Among other things. Don't yeah. be a dick face. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure Joe would be very happy to be like, and your bike is stolen. Thanks for the four hundred dollar donation. Correct. Right. So don't try to be a dumb shit. And is Joe, Joe buy a really bike. the most uh, stoic kind of guy that I've met when it comes to this kind of stuff? He's like, no, he. I am above the board. I am oh, not yeah. going down for this. He is not. This is not a slippery title. No. That's why I said this no. is a bulletproof title. No. When Joe gives you a title for your bike, you know that will stand up anywhere yep. on planet Earth. It is a great goddamn title, but you paid for it. Yeah. It is not a Las Vegas not, it title. It is not. Cheap. It is not a Vermont title. Um, I realized the other day, I was like, look, I got five Vermont registrations. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, maybe I should send some money in and get renewed because they do two-year renewals. Right. right. And I was like, oh, I forgot all about these. Right. And meanwhile, I'm like, oh, the bike, wait, the bike is still here. I still own the bike. And the plate, I still own the plate. Because yeah. unlike Louisiana, Ohio yeah. does do bonded titles. Good, um, good luck. Good luck. No, no, I'll, I'll say that again. I'll give you $500. <laughs> if you can produce me a bonded title for you half know, of the shit I got in my shop. Uh, you know. So maybe if you're Johnny Hot Shit with the title bureau or Johnny Hot Shit with, I got a judge in my oh, pocket. Wait, wait. Come to my shop and I think for $1,000 a mechanics lien and for 500 bucks a bonded title, you could make me look pretty stupid. You know, you know, I'm thinking about this. But ain't nobody taking a Pepsi challenge yet. If Dude, Ohio Tom's recognizes bonded titles... That yeah. means that I can get a Mississippi bonded title, which nobody recognizes. Man, you do not understand the piranhas that work at the title bureau. <laughs> yeah, dude. Welcome yeah. to Ohio. They might seem nice, and they might lines they're might wonderful. not be big. Uh, they're but great. You give them anything but a non-standard anything, yeah. and you're dealing with... That's true. You watch oh. the word no has traveled to the <laughs> speed of light. It'll hurt your soul. They say no so good. Now, here's a, here's a tip for you, though. If you yeah. do, so I, I the Wellington D, DMV. Don't do this. Don't, uh, we talked about this before. Yeah. All right, sorry. But what I was going to say is. A certain township. Certain township. Right. But township. If you, so when I go there now with yeah. multiple titles, right. I take the ladies' donuts. And, I and, they, and they remember it. The last time I went in there, they were like, donut guy. And I was like, got him with me. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking, they'll nice. do anything for you, man. I had a rip title. I was really worried about it. My it ripped. They and wouldn't I, take Johnny Johnny uh, yeah, Fresh's mousy, mousy title. title. They wouldn't take that. Yeah. So I brought a rip title, and she yeah. was like, "Well, you got That's both pieces, and most over fifty percent. Yeah, we'll get that taken care of for you. Nice. Oh yeah. Take them donuts, man. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you about the double salvage triumph title. <laughs> we can try. I'm it. telling you, man. It's, this is one of those things. <laughs> it is better. To go out, if you see a title office that has a couple Amish buggies out front, oh, yeah. that's your spot. Mm -hmm. That's your spot. That's your spot. Have one title, have a bill of sale that's notarized with some signatures on it and, and, and a conspicuous amount of information. On this day and this time, transferred between this party and this party and a signature and the whole deal and, and just go in strong. I, I'll Go be in strong. Yeah. And I will be honest. Uh, go for it. When I transferred the, the element yeah. and the buddy, yeah. it was a little bit more inconvenient in that I had to go to two different buildings in the same same little mini mall. Title place one, place, place, place the other. Yeah. Is odd to me. Because titles are a private industry in the state of Ohio. It's, it's license really plates, weird. License plates are a registration. That's a yeah. state thing. Titles but, are a private organization. But they yeah. both kind of, like it was really easy. Yeah. It was just really inconvenient to go like 
100 yeah, yards. Yeah, but they're always 100 yards away from yeah. each other. Right. That's just been the way for Right. Yeah. So you brought up the Amish. I saw yeah. something when I was at the drag strip yesterday working. Yeah. That's out in Amish. Dragway 42 is out in Amish, Amish country. country. Yeah. Right. right. So I drag saw something. Racing buggies? Racing buggies. No, no, but I saw something I've never seen before. When racing I was buggies. leaving, I was leaving there at 6.30, right? Yeah. There was a dude, um, an Amish guy, in his fucking buggy, passed the fuck out with Bud Light cans, ah. like Miller Light, <laughs> and the horse was just driving the fucking buggy down the well, street. Well, yeah. Can he get a D? Like, like the horse yes. is walking, right? Or My the, understanding. The is, yeah, can he get a DUI? He can? Absolutely, yeah. See, yeah, Chris has got the right answer here. So, but I want to know: Did the horse take him home? Like oh, he's yes. fucking yeah. hammered. The oh, horse yeah, thought no. we just went home, right? The yes. the answer is yes. The horse knows the way back to the barn because that is where the food is. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, good point. Because horses now, are. The question as is, I, was the horse drunk? As I, no, well, but I, wanted, I was, was going to say it's the original I, Tesla, though. It's the self driving buggy. It's the original Tesla. As I have been told. <laughs> well, yeah, that's lane assist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Drink all you want. I got fucking. I I have been driving. told. Time and time again, <laughs> horses know exactly where the barn is because that's where the food lives. Yeah. So, that doesn't surprise me that a horse can find its way home. Right. Right. What surprises me <laughs> is an Amish fella passed out on Bud Light. That doesn't surprise me. Wait, 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 wait. You ready for it? You ready for it? Rum Springer. Rum Springer. No, this dude, he was, <laughs> this is working, man. Right? This yes, guy, this guy right. was full right. gray beard. Yeah, right. He's a 60 year old barn yeah. builder. Right. And you know what? It ain't his first rodeo. No, no. no. And that's, that's how he's been doing that for. Yeah. He and gets an extra hour of sleep every and day. And it is not the horse's first rodeo <laughs> no, either. It's not. I'm uh, gonna. I'm gonna say that that horse gonna, knows. If it's they went past the state trooper, the state trooper say I could, yeah, but, but I won't. Because let me do it. The horse was going. The horse was going like. Eight miles an hour. The horse is going the right hand. Yeah, just doing his thing. Right. Well, yeah, that's it. That's coming it. back from band camp <laughs> last year. Yeah. I came the back way and came through <laughs> came through Amish country and I was coming around a sweeper. I was in the element, fully yeah, loaded, right. coming around a sweeper and I went, oh God. There was a teenage a, a couple teenagers in a horse and buggy and they were on the right because they were. Yeah. And I came around the sweeper and I went, oh crap. Yeah. yeah. But like to tell me that somebody's passed out behind the wheel in a carriage with a horse going, yep, nope, I know where we're going, behind boss. Let's go. Right. Behind the reins. Behind the reins. That's right. Yeah. So no, this is this is not a this is not it a is thing. fucking I, I I just I can just So for all the Amish know, checking in. There's there's a lot of weird shit in Ohio. Ohio's got a lot of its own rules. It's, 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 it's living here is a strange yeah. combination of rural and urban. You got to figure out what the difference between a Mennonite and Amish is. Well, you, you don't have to figure it out. No, the length of the skirts and the fact that the Mennonites are probably made out of denim. You just yeah. you don't have to figure it out. I did date a Mennonite. You just have to not the Mennonites be an pass asshole. Mennonites passed a yeah. from the left hand side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's been a fair podcast. Yeah. I think we gave them their money's worth. Uh, uh, yeah. What I do, what I would say is, if you haven't done it right now, this is the time that you should be, if you're listening to this, this is the time you absolutely positively should be signing up for Mid-Ohio. Yes. You should be getting your shit together. Get ready. Also, yeah. um, uh, this is a tip from your uh, weird uncle. Yeah. <laughs> um, a bunch of weird uncles. Yeah. But... Uh, Uncle Touchy. Now is the time to find the Mid Ohio Facebook groups, and if you're going to bring a bike to sell, you might sell it before you get there and just deliver it. So yeah, you that's put it a up good there, move. Yeah. And then you say, "Hey, I want yeah. three thousand bucks." Some yeah. guy might DM yeah. you and say, "I'll give yeah. you twenty-seven, yeah. and then boom, it's done. You're just taking it and delivering. Oh, and a good uh, one. Of the, some of our friends did this before. This is also if you are going to be going to Mid Ohio and you have not done it before and you don't realize it's thirty-seven miles of walking. Don't expect to find a running motorcycle there for 500, 600 bucks that you can use instead of walking. No. Square one away right now. Yeah. So for $3,000, the $3, we can sell you a Benelli. Okay. So for $3,000, <laughs> we can sell you a Benelli. Or, but more importantly, you could get dibs on the other 14 motorcycles, scooters that we have at the shop. Exactly. That we are going to get running and bringing to mid Ohio. Oh, we should make a list. Mm, that's not a bad idea. We should no, make a list because you rode the Cabo tonight and that we one's going to be up. Yep. We oh, could pre sell a whole oh, lot. Oh, that is true. And I mean, nothing over 1200 bucks. That's true. And the thing is, is yeah. I bet you you'd be willing to give deals if you knew that they were sold oh, on the way yeah. down um, and I you're might not be... wasting your travel time. You know, your, Imagine your... if somebody could, I don't know, say Venmo me or Dang, PayPal me mm-hmm. and have it already in their name title so that go. when we get down there, I hand you the keys, I hand you the title, and off you fuck. 
And you can you can even do, you know do a who's 40, happy about that? Not that they need a tag for Middle Ohio. Everybody's Everybody. happy about that. But literally, I mean, if, it's a, if it's a title bike, you can give them a forty five day tag. I, could, yes. I mean, well, well yeah. how much yeah. how much are the SSRs? The little SSR. We got a few of them. Yeah. Oh, well, I was thinking about that earlier. I was joking. Like the SSR seventy is electric start. Yeah. It's an automatic. Yeah. That is a good way to get around Mid Ohio. Man, that, yeah. Those things you could trade those things like freaking yeah, ball, like baseball could. cards. Right. And I could probably sell that for like seven hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah, like for somebody who's in the circle, right? It's cool. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Hello, uh, folks. Yeah. I will see you guys yeah. next time on the podcast. Yeah. Remember to ride fast and take chances. Bye. Play us out of here, Johnny. Oh wait. <laughs> Bum 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 b